Hello and welcome to another episode of the Full Force Weekly, brought to you by Generals Joe's Reborn.com with me as your host, Christopher McLeod, aka Diagnostic 80. For today's episode, I'm joined by the awesome Patrick Not Picard Stewart. In this regular video series, we round up all the week's news in the world of G.I. Joe. What is it, Pat? It's a Full Force Weekly! Hey, look at you like flexing with your yeah. Damn. Already. Yeah, well, I'm kind of excited because it came in yesterday, but I was so ridiculously tired that I didn't even open the shipper box until today. Yeah, I've just had a busy life lately. That's just how it is. Show us, put it back on screen. I want to, we, we want to look at it. Look at that beauty. How big is that, Pat? Is it bigger than like your entire chest? Yeah, it, look at that. Yeah, it's it's quite large. Uh, yeah, I'm curious to uh, to open it, or I'm just small. I'm only two feet <laughs> tall, so. <laughs> It's just all the damp scale. That's sorry. We're looking at Pat. Pat is at world's smallest scale today. Um, usually he's like what twelve inch, aren't you, Pat? But you're at world's smallest scale today. Right. Oh, I, actually, people keep on telling me that that, that I'm taller than I, I thought they thought I would be. Like that's the thing if, I get at conventions. You're do you know taller what's than funny? I thought you would be. Do you know what's funny? I actually forget that you're actually not. You're not sure. Isn't that weird? Like really? and then when yeah and then when we when we hang out at cons I'm like oh yeah that's that's what Pat looks like that's what Pat looks like in real life and and is that yeah. tall yeah no, it's I, weird. I'm I don't know. but then maybe it's because you're far away from the screen and I'm like up close so I look like a giant and you look like and maybe it's that I don't know if I do that then maybe people will think we're both tiny yeah it could be I don't know there's that picture of me with Adam as well and oh, that's just yeah. not a fair comparison at all. <laughs> Well, Adam, Adam is six foot 12, basically, isn't he? Right. <laughs> Which, yeah, I know, is seven foot, guys. It was a joke. Um, everyone in the chat, loads of you already uh, jumped on. Yeah, I, I kind of started this live a little earlier than usual, and then we went later than usual. How funny is that? Start, I think the live, I went live at like 9.30, and people are like, oh, why are you so late to the show? It's like, we don't start till 10. Um, and then Pat and I decided to uh, talk for ages, didn't we, mate, at the beginning about the vamp and what have you? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll claim responsibility for that. I was not being your fault, chatty. Not your fault. Um, hey, Chris, can I get a shag it? Shag it. There you go. Uh, the vamp is so cool, says Nictimus. Um, it's St. Patrick's Day. Is it? I didn't even realize. No, that's tomorrow, right? So it's tomorrow, and that would be your day, Patrick, wouldn't it? Well, kind you, of sure. I'll take it. Are you it. doing anything special, St. Patrick Stewart? No. I, I used to always go get a shamrock shake, but I, I don't do that anymore. Oh, do you know what? There's a place nearby that do amazing shakes, and they always do like a different one. They do a different flavor every kind of month or every special occasion. I think there's going to be a green one. So I'm going to have to, yeah, I'm going to have to do that. Well, it's probably going to be mint, minty, I imagine. But anyway, right. Let's, enough of that. What is this? The full course? No, this is the full force. Yeah. Um, Pat, lots of news somehow out of, but mo mainly classified. A little bite, si bite sized nuggets of classified uh, stuff this, this week. Um, but also, we've got some Super 7 stuff to cover. Um, excited about that because that was a fun interview I did with Brian. I listened to the whole thing. I really enjoyed it. I recommend that everybody takes a listen to that, uh, especially if you're. Uh, it all into any sort of O-ring news or anything else that Super 7 might be doing. It's just nice to hear it straight from Brian, you know, to not have to interpret any potential rumors or to have it filtered True. in any way. Just to hear it straight from his mouth is great. I love it. Straight straight from the horse's mouth. Although I won't call Brian a horse. That's a bit it's, harsh. It's the full horse weekly now. <laughs> A real equestrian hero. Right, um, let's get on to that first news bit then, which is uh, cl incoming classified. I didn't quite get to the, there we go. I didn't quite get to the graphics in time. Pat's wearing my hat. Look at that. <laughs> hat bros. Um, yes, yeah, so I've gone too far forward. Incoming classified. There you go. Um, so yeah, we've got so it's, it is an absolute mess this morning, isn't it, Pat? There, that was again, I've uh, I failed on the uh, getting everything lined up thing there, but yeah, look at our hats, we've got the same hats on. Um, okay, incoming classified, lots to talk about here. Um, first, we'll start with the 60th and uh, images from 
uh, Darren Marshall, friend of the show, and of course, Airborne's Customs on Instagram. So, what do you, I mean, he bought a few here, didn't he? Yeah, he has a couple of them. <laughs> He's got a couple. But he kind of shows you why. Um, there's a lot of options on this one. You know what? It is actually kind of nice to have this image kind of at, at the beginning rather than waiting to see it later. You know what I mean? Like, this is kind of the purpose of this set. Yes, big time. So I, big so time. I like seeing it earlier than... Like the early reviews, there's always like a, a jump on any of the images that people get early on for, for the entire community just looks at those images heavily. And then we move on to kind of move on to something else, to be honest. Yeah, it's the it's kind of everyone's ADHD now, aren't they? It's just like on to the next yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah so, it's, so it's nice that this is actually how everybody is getting to see everything because uh, it does show off what all you can do with this, including uh popping on some heads from other figures so yeah like nice. stalk, stalker right there yeah. and uh is that grunt's head as well i think sneakily popped on there too so yeah he's ah. uh, yeah i think it's grunt yeah grunt and stalker he's thrown on there um it's this figure i've got to say looks absolutely incredible and i would probably only be getting one of these uh figures but um i've got to say like the options for display are just ridiculous um, what's even crazier is that you know you get all of this gear for thirty four ninety nine, and I'm quite you know th there are some cases, there are some situations where I think that's crazy value value for money, and then there'll be other cases like you know you'll get another figure that maybe doesn't have that kind of lo loadout, and obviously would be cheaper or whatever, or might be in the deluxe bracket that you kind of go I didn't quite get the value out of that uh, one. Kamakura, comes Kamakura to mind. is a great example of that, yeah. And I yeah. think that was that was more a learning curve than anything else, wasn't it? It's I think like, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also a, a budgetary one, because I think at that point, doing an extra head in in a in a figure set, like do it was just an unheard of for a standard retail figure. And I think that Kamakura now, if you were to get that Kamakura, that is just a standard retail loadout, which is, you know, it's interesting that it's gone that way. Usually it just keeps going up and up and up. So at least at least there was an element of yeah, that's that's taking the piss a little bit. <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of crazy now that we're. I'm, I'm quite happy that we're in this phase with deluxe figures. Like it, it doesn't seem too outlandish, really. Not at all. I, I mean, I kind of think that sometimes they may be reluctant to put so much in with one figure because, you know, there it may be the precedent. Thought, well, it sets a precedent, but then also. The accessories, as they're included later, are enticing to finally get, you know, like Roadblock's uh, machine gun. But yeah, the Mardis, absolutely. But it's, yeah. that's not gonna that's not gonna stop people from buying Roadblock again. It just it doesn't really. I I don't think it really works that way. I don't think yeah. people people do that much mixing and matching of figure sets uh, on on like maybe a wide basis. I'm sure some people do, but yeah. Um, but this is good. I like everything that comes in here. Yeah, definitely. It's a, a, it is like um, an accessory but, set, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, that's what it is. I mean, like the, the people have been kind of wanting wanting um sort of like accessory packs, but it's funny, like some of the figures do turn into accessory packs, don't they? Like there's so many weapons with them, and they're not always going to be able to hold all of this stuff. So you can kind of spread it out. You can give rifles and and other weapons to other characters that you might not like like the weapons with those particular characters <clears throat> so i think this is this is a way actually of doing accessory sets without doing accessory sets if that makes sense um anyway yeah then we of course we've got this is from bees battlegrounds shout out to bees battlegrounds on instagram for uh this image or and the, a lot of people with vamps and clutches honestly uh and i just like this image and wanted to kind of put it out there uh really cool stuff though pat uh, are you excited to bust yours out Yes, I will probably be doing that right after we're done. I think Bees lives somewhere near me, to be honest. I think like he's local to me, but I've never met him. Interesting. Uh, he's next door. He's lit he did he look out yeah. the window? He was taking this picture. Is that why he's I think this guy lives near me because I saw this picture being taken. <laughs> yeah, I, I recognize the stick and the grass in this picture, so <laughs> oh, that would be uh, so yeah. crazy. I'm looking forward to opening this. I really right off the bat, it is it is nice just getting these in hand. Yeah. 
I, I don't know what it what it is a, why you see things online, but then once you have them in hand, it's uh, a different it, thing, man. It is a different thing. So, like, I'm sitting here wondering: is is the package? We haven't seen the package for the ferret, right? Right. So we I'm haven't seen it. We've just yeah. We just we'll probably see the vamp behind the ferret. Maybe is that's, that what you think? That's what I'm wondering if they're going yeah. to do that because they've done that on some of the Transformers art, where you'll see like a couple guys battling in the in the far background, and then the package for them shows the other figure that you're looking at for that one. Yeah, um, yeah. But also the head sculpt on this, I really like um, just the hair that they that they captured for Clutch. It, it looks like Clutch. It so, really does. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Again, you're right though. There's that. There's a completely different vibe when it's in hand. It is. Uh, yeah. And and <laughs> Kitty said, and it's it, it like especially the vehicle as well. I saw a comparison shot the other day with the vamp next to the his tank, and I was like, um, how big is that thing? Because I was not expecting that. I was expecting it to to be dwarfed by the his tank, but in my head, I think I'm just expecting a vamp. As in a vamp, not a vamp. Do you know what I mean? Like in my head, I only know this vamp that's like this big, and that's what I'm expecting in a weird way. Yeah, no, I, I totally get that. I, I'm I'm right there with you. <laughs> I wonder how they'll do the Stinger Vamp Mark II and Tiger Sting. Um, probably exactly as you expect them to do it. You'll probably get. Um, well, I think a Sting is will be next up. I think they'll do a, a Cobra version of it, and then once you've got that in tow. You can kind of do a um, well. You can't really do the stinger, the tiger sting, because that has the Mark II weapon, doesn't it, Pat? Right. So you'd need to do um, a Mark II, really, wouldn't you, before you did a tiger sting, or you do a tiger sting well, and then? I, I believe the European one is different than the American one. I think that the the weapon is the Mark II weapon on either one. Is that right? And then. Um, the gas cans changed, didn't they? Yeah, the the I, I guess the the actual mold is a weird one because I think it's you're supposed to. What, oh my god, we did a whole video on this, and yeah. we we talked about the funny narrative that would have to play out because of Tiger the way Tiger Force steal and repaint vehicles, right. and it was like it was like they they stole their own one or something. I can't even remember what the point was. Right, I think that I was. I think that we were when we were talking about it. It was like you know how Tiger Force the the concept was that it was stolen vehicles. So yeah. Essentially, it seemed like they had stolen it back from Cobra. Yeah, yeah. And, After they they it. and like, <laughs> it's just the same vamp going back and forth from one team <laughs> to the other. <laughs> that was it, yeah. And it would um, make sense then for it to be called the Tiger Sting because it would yeah. be based on the Stinger. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I think, you'd, I mean, you, we're probably going to get, you, I don't think they're going to go to the, the levels of, uh, he says that, and then they've done the whole Python friggin' officer mistake already. I don't think they'll go to the levels of making an ever so slightly different front section to no. recreate the the different. I think it'll be the same vehicle, just black with a different weapon system is and doors is what I'm expecting, honestly. That, that's my expectation as well. How long though do you think that they'll space this out? Because the RAM, obviously, twenty twenty five maybe twenty twenty five. You think? Well, I, I would, I could see it this year. I could see it at the end of the year being revealed at least. I, I could as well. I could see them not wanting to sit on it that long because it's also larger tooling. Uh, Maybe Yojo June as a reveal, and then get it later in the year, possibly. Yeah, because at this point, um, I don't think they're going to have a trouble selling through whatever standard vamps they have, even if Ooh. everybody knows that a Tiger Force one and a Stinger are on the way. I think this it'll be is a good fine. point. This is a good point by a punk with toys as well, Pat. I think the stinger has to be next because not everyone has a hiss to tow the HMS. That's a good point. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, so they probably want to, will want to get it out fast. Yeah, that is a good point. Yeah, I would have to say if I was a betting human, I would probably go with. Um, we'll probably see something like that this year, it, even if we don't see it like around summertime. We'll see it before the year is out, and we'll probably maybe get it at the start of twenty twenty five. But I, I could see them getting it. Out. I really could. I guess the only question will be the sell-through because I fully expect the Tiger Force one and the Stinger to just sell out. They're not going to have any problem moving every single one of those that they make. So then the question becomes, well, that kind of will encourage them to continue making them. 
And that's where I'm curious is, is what's, what's the creative end of it? Because obviously we were now looking at a night force Ram, which didn't exist in the original line. Yeah. So what could they, what could they do with a vamp? I, I would probably, I don't know if I was, if I was part of the creator team here, and this is just me personally, I don't necessarily think a night force vamp would be on the cards for me personally. I think, the, excuse me, I think the Ram makes sense as a, small vehicle that already exists in the line that you know we you can throw in um for this particular set for walmart right that makes sense it's kind of like comfortable it's easy it's done right um th there are a lot of options i mean a night force ferret would make more sense for me um you know with current vehicles they have in their lineup wow. because we've had that with the club we've had that with the joe concert oh, so i yeah, could see true. i could see that happening with the vamp I think the Dreadnought Ground Assault is fair game. Oh, I yeah, think, yeah. I think that's fair game. And um, probably <laughs> probably the Super Cop Vamp. No, um, I'm just kidding. You know, the the police the police vamp. Uh, the Fun School, um, what was that one that they brought out? I forget what it's called now. MRF Racing? Yes, the MRF Racing one. Probably won't see those. But no. I could definitely see a Dreadnought um, Ground Assault. And yeah, I, I, think I, that, to, I think that would be enough. I think that would be enough for the tooling, wouldn't you? I, I think it would, but I guess I need to change my original thing and, and include the dreadnought in there because I do think that we will get all the classic stuff, and the classic stuff's just going to sell through. Yeah. And then there's going to be an yeah. opportunity to repaint it. And I think with the the RAM, it was almost a matter of the timing crossing paths on those. Yes. Like it just kind of made sense to potentially reuse that. It was available. It's you know not doing anything else, and they were also focusing on Night Force at the time. But if we're well past mo the bulk of Night Force by the time we get to that fourth vamp repaint, I don't see them pulling it out for Night Force right after that. No, you plus, never know what sub team they may be focusing on at that point that we could get. Yeah, plus Sammy made a good point here is the Night Force vamp would probably look too much like a stinger. Yeah. And that, that's so true. Like yeah. it would just be a stinger, but with like copper and slightly burnt orange parts. Do you know what I mean? Like I or gold, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> it looks copper and gold, doesn't it? Basically, what they've done with the uh with the deco on the RAM. So without that real burst of bright orange to kind of clearly make, you know, show you it's a Night Force vehicle vintage wise anyway then i yeah I, I i can't see them really going that direction with it but all those other things i think when they get to the dreadnought ground assault i th or i'm just guessing here but i would expect to see stinger tiger sting dreadnought ground assault i think with those i think that's that's it i don't think they need to repaint it other than, uh, after that i think they'd probably get to the point they might even think themselves this has been used enough or we've done enough Maybe. Maybe. i don't know I get what your point though, because the mindset for Hasbro will always be: this is hot. We need to keep doing this <laughs> until Honestly, it doesn't. I could see a versus set too. <clears throat> oh wow! Like wow, pull, pull the electronics out of the hiss. Yep. You know, sim yep. simplify the the hiss. There's a lot of parts that don't need to come with that, and the yeah, electronics totally. that can be gutted out. We've talked about that before, like the potential of them just. Putting a hiss at retail, you know. Could Imagine he, the box, Pat. Set? Imagine the box for a versus set, his tank versus a vamp. <laughs> yeah, it'd be large, but I, I oh, could I, see it happening. I, I forgot the Mark II as well. I, I, I did think um, I, I was when I was talking about the classics and what I expect. I forgot to say the Mark II because I think the Mark II yeah. would be an easy one because it gets you tan grunt as well, and that's an easy it thing does. for them to do as well. Yeah, um, it, there, there's just so many uses of it, but I still think that at the end of the classic ones, you know, and maybe even somewhere in between, I think that there's potential to give us the vamp an additional time because I think that it's that popular. Someone did mention, um, oh, the, yeah, the Python, the Python, the Python Stinger as well uh, is another one that, that I think that that would be on the yeah. cards too. <laughs> I keep forgetting yeah. about stuff. Right, you're right. Okay. So, and someone did mention doing Marauders version, which I could see Clutch being in the Marauders. I could see them doing something like that yeah, as well, honestly. I think that makes sense. Okay, so I would, this is my list, right? This is my personal list, and you can do yours afterwards, right? I'm thinking we've got Vamp, right? Yeah. Stinger, Tiger Sting. It. I agree. Yeah, yeah. Stinger, Tiger yeah. Sting, Mark II, 
um, Dreadnought Ground Assault, Python Stinger, or maybe Python Stinger above Dreadnought Ground Assault because of the fact we've got the sub team. I, I feel like it's it's a poss it's a high possibility with target, basically. Um, so maybe those two kind of I don't know out of those two, uh, and then of course your um, uh, what, have I, what am I left with? I think that's it then. And then I think at the end you're going to get your Marauders possibilities. That's what I think. What do you think? I, I think that it would make sense to do the straight repaint as much as well. I think I think the Stingers definitely would be next. Yeah. But then I think I'm going to bump up the Dreadnought Ground Assault. Ooh. Wow. Ahead of the um, ahead of the Mark II, just because there wouldn't be the need for as much retooling. Good point. And I don't know. Maybe they've already uh, they they probably did already design or have a basic design in for uh, the Mark II and the Stinger. I would assume yeah. that they yeah. worked that into this tooling and, and figured all of that out in advance. But well, I still think the... that tooling up the Stinger would would lead to, or those parts would lead to the Dreadnought one prior to the Mark II. But I could be wrong. I think the fact that there's a, a rumored um, Snowcat in the distance as well mm -hmm. could mean that they do some sort of like shared tooling with the weapon system on the Snowcat and the Mark II. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, just putting that one out there. Yeah, um, they're, roughly, they're close enough. Yeah, yeah. I, I, like I said, like yeah, because because obviously vintage, they're not the same. But like in in terms of like something here, they could easily do a share, couldn't they? And yeah, and, and definitely get away with it. Um, Finn says the initial sellout guarantees at minimum the stinger, and I agree with that one hundred percent. This has been a real win for the classified series already. I think the uh, the vamp. It's one of those things that's really caught fire in terms of its popularity. Uh, and yeah, the fact that it's sold out is crazy good. Um, Jeremy says, anybody else wish they had some uh, working lights though with the vamp? Would you have liked that, Pat, or do you not? Are you not too fussed? Uh, I've seen people work them in already. Like yeah. that kind of surprised me at how fast some somebody was working. I wish that I could credit the person I saw that because it looked great. Yeah. So I I do think that there's a potential for something, but. In a lot of ways, I would like to see that be like a gridiron or or somebody mm -hmm. put out like a a kit for you to just modify the existing vamp than to make everybody pay that. Because I think that that's part of what caused the hiss to have to be such an expensive vehicle. So I, I do like the idea. I like whenever that happens. But uh, I'm also good with the price that we paid for this because yes, yes, it does seem to be like a that was part of the reason why I pre-ordered. I was like, that price almost seems too good. Yeah, uh, so $99.99. It, but... <laughs> yeah. it is crazy because it's not like they're just giving them away. But yeah, there, there's a lot in here. We've talked many, many times about cost. But I, I think that for what you're getting, for what you're paying, it's really good this time around. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, that's... So, that... That, there's a lot of vamp talk today. My goodness. Yeah, what were you yeah. going to say? What were you going to say, bud? Uh, Jamie Lynn asked a good question that I liked. You think that we'll the... get multiple mid-sized vehicles for sub-teams or just one main for each? That is... I, honestly, Jamie Lynn, uh, all of the above. <laughs> I think we're probably going to get... You probably get, like, for example, let's look at, um, let's look at Tiger Force. If you get a Tiger Sting... Then you've already covered both of those things, really, and you, we're all. The, the, also, there's a high likelihood we'll get a, a, a tiger paw as well. So, if tiger sting happens, you've all tiger force has already covered that quite comfortably, and I would expect, you know, that I would expect that to follow suit with the other ones. Um, I, I think with the mid-sized night force vehicle, though. That's going to be slightly difficult because I don't know what it's going to have to be a new vehicle, isn't it? I think um, I can't see them doing like I said, we can't see them doing a Night Force vamp. You never know; they might do. They might drop some of those other things we've been talking about and do a Night Force vamp, and everyone will be go going, "Well, it's too similar to the Stinger," like we've just said. But who knows? I, I what do you think, Pat? Here, do you think we'll get multiples for for all the, the sub teams or? I, I think the challenge is the cha I, I think the challenge is the challenge of it being a six inch line. Yeah. And I think they're well aware of that. Like space for vehicles 
is tough. Like if you put a vehicle on a shelf, that may be less, that may be fewer figures that somebody buys just because it takes up so much room. And I th also think it's hard to price out a, a vehicle for a six inch figure. When, whenever the six inch line started going, going back to previous episodes, we may have even said that we don't really see a, a vamp in the cards at some point. We didn't see vehicles on the cards, did we? we Other didn't. than maybe yeah. small ones. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like, I think we may have talked about a ram making sense, but maybe a vamp not making a lot of sense. I and I we... do think that there's a limit to what they can do in, yeah. in six inch scale. So I, I don't know. I think that they're probably being smart about laying them out and not giving too much to any single sub team right away. But I, I do think... expect to see Tiger Force get something again soon. Yeah, I mean, and the multiple mid-sized vehicles is a good question, actually, Jamie Lynn, because obviously that would require, like, for the Tiger Force, you know, like, what, a Tiger Shark or a Tiger Fly? Like, could you see them doing a Dragonfly repaint, Pat? I mean, in the in the future? Again, taking the electronics out and maybe trying to well, base it. The thing is, bit. Tiger Force as a deco pops so much pops that out. I would say no, but at the same time, yeah, I... They're going to probably want to get some more life out of the dragonfly tooling, and the number one spot would be the tiger fly. So yeah, yeah, I kind of. I'm just going to say, good. I'm just going to say for Jamie Lynn, I'm going to say I think there are certain situations, certain sub teams that will probably get multiple vehicles, both midsize and small, uh, in. But there are some that I probably can't see having that sort of stretch. Um, Mad Marauders is another one. Obviously, we're getting Mad Marauders figures, it would appear, um, as well yeah. with the leaks of uh, the Sarge and uh, Low Light and Spirit and Niol. But I would, uh, you know, I, I don't know, but in terms of vehicles, you're looking at like, you know, the Lynx, the Blimin, um, what, what's the other, what are the other ones called? I've completely forgotten the names. I don't, I never remember the names of the Marauders vehicles, to be honest. I've completely I forgotten the Marauders. Oh, I suppose the tri the Night Force Triple T, the the Night Raider, just coming back to Night Force would be a mid sized vehicle that I could see happening. Yeah, yeah, I could see that as well. So that's a mid size I could throw in with Night Force immediately and say like I could see that happening, no problem. You don't so think Jamie we've already gotten the Triple T though? If we were going to get one. Oh no, I think the Triple T is on the cards, mate. Okay. I think the triple I think the triple T is on the cards. And I think like especially when you see the fact that we've got the O-ring version of it kind of around the corner with Cup and the collaboration. I I think I genuinely think we could see a classified triple T. If if again, if I were a betting human, definitely. Um so yeah, I, maybe it, I, that and that's why I think like the night raider might be so like possible. Do you know what I mean? For, yeah for the night force. Um, so Jamie Lynn, to ask, ask your question for Night Force, I think maybe you got maybe one in them. You got one midsize, and then you got a bunch of little vehicles as possibilities. Um, from that, from my point of view, and my my, you know, uh, what's the word? Opinion. God, I'm so I'm, I'm losing words from my vocabulary <laughs> so quickly. It's it's painful. Tiger Shark eventually says Finn. I'd like to see a Tiger Shark. I'd like to see. Uh, 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 water moccasin, just in general, got so many cop heads and nothing to nothing for him to hoss around in. What's going on? Yeah, Skyhawk soon. I could definitely see that. Yeah, big time. Uh, Sammy Delco posted. So yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, definitely Skyhawk. Um, yeah, and then obviously the shark, the Sky Shark. I mean, I could see that. You know, the Chrome version. Uh, before the uh, regular shark, <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, a of course. huge chrome vehicle would be pretty cool. I just don't know that they can do that anymore. I wonder if I wonder if a havoc would be Haslab worthy. As in, would it be possible? I I don't really see why not. Um, because if you did it. fewer electronics or no electronics and just did a bigger vehicle, we could probably get there. But again, you're, you're spending a lot of space in people's houses with all this huge HasLab stuff. So Havoc would be massive, wouldn't it? Yeah. And you'd have like the two-person lay-down front ways cockpit. 
you'd have the one person seated on the top and that thing would have to kind of move like up and down right. like in attack mode and then back in drive mode or whatever and then the right. back thing would open up and you'd have a and you'd have a, someone in that hovercraft flying oh mate and think of the blast effect they could do coming off the back of like a little stand coming off the back yeah, of an open true. going into the the like the hovercraft like um I don't know, like the jet fumes or whatever coming up. The, how cool would right, that be? Yeah. yeah. And you could probably tool that separately so that you could release it on its own as well. Because oh I think everybody liked playing with that hovercraft by itself. Oh, my God. It was so, yeah. Remember the, um, was it, well, obviously remember, the Defiant and the Crusader had that kind of thing, didn't it? Where it was like they released the Crusader separately to kind of give people the, you know, you know what I mean? Like there's like a... Yeah. A separation there and a similar thing i know what you're saying with the havoc you could easily do that hovercraft as its own vehicle you know like as a mini kind of thing yeah I, that would be fun that would be really fun um again b's battlegrounds there you go b you're on i'm pretty sure that's your image on screen um i'd be more inclined to the smaller place that's like out, outpost defender surveillance port battle bunker that would be wicked that that would yeah be so you know good. i saw somebody do a polar repaint of the cobra battle bunker recently and i just thought that it looked amazing and it made me think man that's something that they really do need to get back to definitely definitely right yeah. um that's all of the vamp talk ever in the world in the universe ever uh and also we're getting techno viper and quick kick showing up um and amazing i can't believe we talked that long about that pat that's quite amazing um we were, we were at the beginning we were doing the usual thing of saying not much to talk about this week really so it'll probably be really quick yeah we're half an hour in already uh, so Rolando Avendano posted this Im this image of um, getting a Techno Viper and quick kick in already, crazy pants. Um, I I'm look I'm looking at these and I'm I'm liking what I'm seeing, especially with that Techno Viper loadout, Pat. That is a packed standard release figure, is it not? It is. He just kind of has to peek out there from behind his art because <laughs> the accessories are taking up so much space. <laughs> It's like, hey, you, I'm I'm in here too. It, I you get me as a figure as well. Um, yeah, it's kind of crazy how much gear he comes with. Um, and it's funny because when you look at the figure in all the promo images and everything, you're thinking, yeah, it's cool. But you you forget there's all this stuff with him, and yeah. most of it fits on the backpack um, uh, as well. All the tools and everything, which is really really awesome. Um, oh, and B's Battlegrounds has said, Pat, it is. Thank you. And I'm a little bit south of you, I think, Pat. I was thinking that you were a little bit north of me. That's what I was thinking. It, Pat's only saying that to confuse people so they don't know where he lives. That's all he's. That's all he's doing that for. I, I think um, we have a common friend, so yeah, we'll have to talk at some point. That'd be cool. Definitely. And then Pat can watch you while he take pictures in your garden. Um, <laughs> and uh, and a quick kick as well. I'm really excited for quick kick. I know we we don't have necessarily the, the same enthusiasm for all the figures on the releases, Pat, but right. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I can't remember where you fell on Quick Kick. Uh, I, I like him, it, okay. but at the same time, I wish that he had some throwing stars that were separate. That's just yeah. kind of becoming a recurring thing for me that I don't understand why we got that in four inch and that, like they keep avoiding it in six inch. Yeah, no, I, I have to agree with that. I, I'm surprised we don't see even just like some ninja stars i don't know why that we haven't seen that because we've seen like the the throwing kind of design like style ones or the one attached to the hand but you're yeah. right like the figures have already got the inbuilt ability to hold a ninja star like they're right. already there so like it seems weird that we don't see that yeah i can't blame them for not making them because i saw a lot of customs where um people used shang chi and made them removable and I don't really expect that. I think that it probably looks better to have them not be removable. But oh, yeah, totally. at the same time, um, I think that he could have like some additional ones, maybe that went to the backpack or that just were separate so you could have him hold one. I don't know. It's um, it, it's a, a bit of a uh, something that was left out. But the fudgy bar definitely helps make up for that. Definitely. I love how it's open and everything as well. There's a bit yeah. of chocolate showing. It's really cute. I'm loving it. Um, anyway, yes. And someone's mentioned that BBTS are also saying that the orders are getting processed for this wave. Uh, they are, yes. Um, I've actually also seen, um, uh, what was it, GameStop, I think. Um, I started getting a few of these in stock. Um, a few like 
figures here and there from the kind of recent uh, things we've been talking about. Um, so that's also pretty cool. I mean, it, this is always the case, isn't it? Like the deluge now of of all the you know pre-orders coming in, um, and it does hit you from every angle. So um, yeah, bear that in mind. All the pre-orders pre-orders out there. Um, so yeah, that's that's Techno Viper and Quick Kick. Um, I expect to see the rest of that wave as well pretty soon. We'd already seen like Airborne sneaking out. Uh, I think it's and, and we have seen Big Boa in package as well. Uh, but I guess um, we'll probably see more of those images and them coming in a little bit later. Right, moving on, and we're still actually technically classified. Yes, we are talking Walmart CollectorCon and WonderCon announcements next. So, of course, Sh Night Force Shockwave or Jason Shockwave Faria and the Night Pursuit were re fully revealed in pre-order fashion, I guess, um, or during the week, and um, went up on both Pulse with very short, uh, small amounts, as per usual, and of course, still available on the Walmart website for pre-order, which is pretty cool. So if you want this, you can still get it, link in the description. Um, and of course, we got a few added extras with this particular, like from the week previous where we talked about the leaked images and of course the images that we got for the actual sneak peek. Um, we did get a few extra bits and pieces this time around, including a much better close up and quality shot of the background render here, the back art, the artwork, the, the back of the cut, the back of the box. I don't know what you call it, whatever you call it, the render. We got better image quality here and I'm still contemplating, Pat, that something behind him, to the right of him, creeping around the rock thing, which probably just the edge of the rock, I'm sure it is, but I'm convinced it's something. I'm convinced it's like some sort of character or hidden thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be asking the question to the team and see if there is anything back there. Are you saying um, on the left side of the picture or the, the which side? Right of him. So if you look at the if you look at the guy on the bike, just to hit the right of his elbow, there is like what looks to be a shape oh, of okay. something. Some people have said it looks a little bit like the snake armor. So it could be an homage that they're throwing in there with the cave and everything. Okay. Some people said it like it could just be like a character in camouflage or whatever. It could be Xandar or what have you. I look at it and i just i see something my head my my brain is telling me it's something but i look at it and when i zoom in it just looks like the rock formation still you know what it's honestly i would love for it to be the snake armor if that's what it is that would be so good wouldn't it, it well a six inch snake armor for me is also uh four inch compatible <laughs> you know yeah because I mean? of the yeah, the movie snake armor and the yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. So please, please just give us a snake armor and, and do it soon. I, I would love that. Yeah. Um, yeah, taps. Yeah, let let's fingers crossed that that would that would be freaking amazing. Uh it would be huge, uh Flaffel, but it wouldn't be like it wouldn't be like vamp levels huge. It would just be bigger than the figure that goes inside it. So it would what it'd be like eight inches, you reckon? If, if it was uh, I don't I don't know. I think that there's I think it's kind of open to interpretation. And there's in a lot of ways I would like it to be huge. I would also like a little more articulation. I wouldn't want it to just be a, a dude doing this and then you know legs that don't have the ability to to right. do much. Like I think that that would be really cool to do you know to, to really <clears throat> update the thing. Do you know what I would like? If you take the front section off, right? So if you yeah. if you took the kind of like if you kind of take the the Super 7 Super Cyborg kind of um, like <clears throat> like right. direction, right? Yeah. You take the front off and then inside, rather than having like, you know, like they, they have like a front panel that comes off before you see the inside technically, but I'm, I would just need the front to come off, right? The front comes off and then inside you can have like almost like a, um, a section with like controls that would go like almost like stick out. So the figure could slide inside that and have hands-on controls, even though when you close it and put the front on, you don't really see that. Like I yeah, think that would like, be kind of fun. Just imagining like hand controls or like yeah, look, something like almost like yeah, like almost like a imagine like a belt around them um, yeah. that, that kind of sticks uh, yeah. out yep. with little hand controls on it. 
and that would like you that would be a way of kind of keeping the figure in the actual um you know inside like in place almost right. so it wouldn't rattle around but you could also have the seat belt i guess um but i think it'd be really cool to have like a little control deck panel that you could see them utilizing when the front wasn't on if you get what i'm saying yeah i, I think that the legs are probably the biggest thing that i have a question with because do you make the knee match up with the knee of the figure or do you just yeah. put his lower leg in the upper leg of the snake and just make it huge yeah you know? like there's a lot of different ways you could go with that design and yeah that's one of the things i would love to task the current team with and say okay you know kind of revisit this in a way that can be a little bit um, upscaled and, and pricier but uh, a little more modern and new as well and maybe yeah. do a no equivalent since there's that concept art where it was like a GI Joe thing. Yeah, totally. Um, I, I could see them doing a green one and like it's you know it's an army builder for the GI. Yeah. <laughs> and then you you've got to get like the special. It'll be like the steel core figure that comes with the green um, uh, snake armor or something. I could see that easily. Um, mm -hmm. Down South Seven says I just see trees. Actually, Down South Seven Seven I just see trees, and I think it is probably just me, honestly. Uh, FC Viper says you're seeing things, Chris. I yeah, I think I am. I think uh, so Snake too, but he's seeing fun things. I'm seeing things that I, I'm trying to manifest into reality, guys. Come on, <laughs> let's do this. Uh, Snake armor would be awesome, says a real Zim. Uh, what are we talking about again? Says RKW. Yeah, what are we talking about sizing, sizing of things. Kitty said. Um, Ryan says the snakes imprint are about seven and a half inches. That the ones that you print, oh, sorry, the snakes that you print are about seven and a five, seven point five inches. Funnily enough, Ryan, both even though you, it was an even though it was an autocorrect situation, it made sense what you were saying. Um, like the snakes imprint, you know, like its size, what it what it takes up in terms of space. So both of those work. Um, just say you want snake armor. You don't have to make up a phantom image that's not there, says Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. Um, anyway. I think I see Snake Eyes version 3 in the background as well, now that we're Here talking we go. about that. Here we go, guys. Is that <laughs> Snake Eyes version 4 parachute? No, I, I think it's Snake Eyes version 3. No, I you think it's Snake Eyes version... Reflection. You can I see in the it's... reflection of, of the robot, if you look close, <laughs> Snake Eyes version 3 is in there. <laughs> I think, yeah, yeah, no, Snake Eyes version four is parachuting out of a tomahawk in the background, guys. <laughs> and it's the, and it's an eagle hawk that's going to be done as a hazard. There you go. Oh, actually, no, it's a havoc in the background with, anyway, yeah, uh, you're right, guys. We are, okay, I'll take that. And I, you know what I'm like, though? <laughs> I tend to look at these so closely and try to extract as much as I possibly can. In reality, this render is probably just, in terms of homage, is just the dark energy on crystals, the cave that everyone's inside of, and it's at night now. So there you go. That's <laughs> that's probably that's all there is to it. That's what we're dealing with. Um, anyway, yeah, like it. Um, I'm, I do actually like this one, and they did pre-order this, by the way, people, because um, I, I don't know. I just kind of I like the thought now of just your one at a time exclusive per store because I think it cuts down a lot of the issues that people were having when you minimize the amount of items that you can press them into say you know one set because you've got like you've got multiple items here but just in one set i think it gives people a much easier way of attaining them one but then also an easier logistical situation for the company involved aka walmart but would you agree with that pat or would you like to see more multiples i what i'm hoping it does is makes it more possible for them to have targeted clearances on things whenever they don't move and to maybe actually see some of the exclusives because around yeah. here the first two waves of the retro cards are still on the pegs at full price next to you know a bunch of shipwrecks that are on clearance for some reason i don't understand how that happened uh and it's frustrating because I've still never seen at retail. I've never seen Range Viper, Big Ben, yeah, um, same. the, the um, Mole Rats, n none of that stuff. I've not seen any of it. And I wonder, is that something that I'm going to be looking at at Ross, you know, in November? Or is it something that just hasn't trickled through yet? You know, wh 
where is all that stuff? Did other people buy it and I just didn't get it because it went to other parts of the country? Like what? I don't know what's going on. I have, uh, yeah, I've no answer to that because it, it feels like it's the same where I am, mate. Like I've gone into a couple of Walmarts um, and I the only figures I've ever seen in, in those two Walmarts near us um, have been the gung-ho uh, Cobra Commander um lady j retro um baroness retro figures i don't think i've seen anything you're talking else. the standard cobra commander stand sorry standard cobra commander standard gung-ho okay. retro lady j and retro baroness are the only I, figures i think i've seen at the walmarts i could still go pick up a retro gung-ho around here and and lady j and baroness and yeah i guess i yeah. did see crimson guard that's the one that I, I did yeah. finally see on the pegs of later waves, but that never saw but that's it. it uh, of the never retro ones. So I you, I even had to send you snake eyes, didn't I? That's hey, right, I'm, you I'm did. just I appreciate I'm just that, but... I'm just I'm just telling everyone how nice I am as a person. That's all I'm doing there, Pat. I've still never seen snake eyes. Like I wouldn't have one otherwise. Can I also say Pat had sent me a chuckles before that? So Ch Pat had literally spent more money on me than I did on him, and I'm here trying to be like, "Hey, I'm a great person because I sent Pat a retro snake eyes, and we're and we're even now. <laughs> it's like half the price of what you sent me." <laughs> Pat, I owe you money. Um, right? No, anyway, no, you don't at all. But but to That's your point, point, yes, I think that doing the single, like the the two pack for for tiger force it's going to make it easier to get the thing to retail and easier to know whenever it's the right time to get rid of it because i exactly. think yeah that the pigs full of lady jays here may have just been forgotten in the shuffle of what goes on clearance and what doesn't i absolutely agree and i think that is one of the ways to yeah minimize that if that that kind of cause and effect kind of situation with all yeah 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 um right uh, we also have this beautiful artwork, um, which it, I, I did incorrectly credit uh, Oliver Barrett for, and Oliver Barrett correctly corrected me that it wasn't his, but he thought it was amazing. So shout out to Oliver Barrett anyway for the amazing work he does. Uh, but also um, this particular uh, piece, we don't know the artist, but we know that the company, I believe it was, um, mentioned. And I can't remember off the top of my head because there's too much information to uh, keep in my head at one time. And then I always forget to, to kind of double check on some of these things because it goes out of my head quite often. Um, but do can I find out now is the question, Pat. Can I find out what it was? Yes, I can. Thanks to, awesome thanks actually, to um, the comments on Instagram, uh, underscore J underscore G said, um, picture plane imaging is the is one of their artists. So picture plane imaging, and that's P-L-A-N-E, picture plane imaging on Instagram um, are actually responsible for this artwork. And it's a beauty. I think this, I think this came out really well, personally. This is a real striking piece, I think. It is really nice. I, I, I like it. Um, I didn't realize that it was still in stock on Walmart. I could swear that on that first day that it had said sold out whenever I went to their website. Well, I haven't checked since yesterday. No, so... I, I checked a minute ago. It's it's still available. You're correct. Oh, okay. I just cool. was not aware of that. So I'll probably pick one up after after we're done because I don't know that I need the the cycle. I would like it to have some of that pop of, of that reddish orange, but... I do like Night Force Shockwave quite a bit, as I think he's, everyone does. Yeah, I think he, they've done really well with this one. And a slight, yeah. you know, they've changed some of the parts as well, with, which, again, I don't think was necessarily necessary, but um, it kind of does have a good effect on the figure. Like, there's the, 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 the legs look really good, the arms look really And I think it's really, like, the secondary in the head and I think the torso uh, are the Shockwave original bits. So, um, but again, I don't know the ins and outs. And we haven't seen the the secondary off, so who bloody knows? Uh, I'd imagine it would be the same body. Um, David has asked, can I send him retro snake eyes? <laughs> Unfortunately, the only one I had spare, because again, it's just me putting out how good a person I am, um, was sent to Pat, unfortunately. So you'll have to you'll have to ask Pat for that. Or steal it off him in the kind of like <laughs> Tiger Force uh Python Patrol sort of way and repaint it. Um, in your own deco. 
Uh, yeah. Down South 7 Seven said they're finally putting the retro cards and Shipwreck Rock and Roll on enough clearance here that they might actually sell. I picked up the last Rock and Roll at one for seven bucks. Never seen retro Crimson Guard, Snake Eyes, Storm Shadow, or Zartan. Storm Shadow and Zartan were another two that just never existed. I've never seen them, ever. I only got, I only got them through um, Pulse, I think, and never, ever saw them. Right. And going to like some, I, I've been so busy, I haven't made it to very many local toy shows, but local toy shows and um, like Joe Fest, it's like, I don't see the stuff showing up there either. So I have to think that nationally it's a problem, not just with me. Yeah. Well, Jamie says, I've never seen G.I. Joe at retail, retail outside of a few retro figures and the Tiger Force stuff. Um, it's so true. Like I've, I definitely did see, oh no, I tell a lie. I did see, I think, a shipwreck and a rock and roll because I think I took pictures of them and sent them in the group and was like, I never see this. But I'd already got them at that point. So it didn't really make any, you know, it was, to me, it wasn't like, it didn't stand out other than the fact, holy crap, there are other figures on the shelves here. Um, but that's it. The rest of it's always been, yeah, kind of your Tiger Force stuff in Target, minimal as well. Tiger Force and some, and Python Patrol, very minimal stuff though. And, and the odd one, not all of them. Never seen Duke and the Ram. I've never seen Duke and the Ram. Really? I bet you've seen yeah. 50 of them, right? I, you know, I didn't end up picking one up because I didn't really love the... Uh, I didn't love where they put the mouth and I didn't love the price. So whenever I was picking and choosing, it didn't, it didn't make the cut. But yeah, those went on clearance around here. So yes, I've seen that multiple times. Be careful where you put your mouth around Pat, is all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, the artwork for Shockwave is phenomenal. Love it. Um, and I really like the fact that they did the, they kind of went a little bit extra with the deco and they gave him what the vintage figure doesn't have, which is that kind of digital camo again um, on the hat and on the le legs. I thought that was a really nice touch. Um, so, yeah, yeah, really cool. Kind of continues from the 25th. I think, I think we talked about that. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. It does. Yep. I, I do forget I do forget that there were figures <laughs> in between the vintage area and classified like yeah. of yeah of course there were figures uh, that I I got most of them as well and the the, the sad thing is 25th 25th going all the way through to like 50th right I have and have never opened I don't think I've ever I, I can't think of anything I've opened in that period of time Pat other than a few possible loose things I got for the for like specifically like doing a custom for the, for a thing so like i have an open low light pursuit of cobra i have an open ambush from the fss and i have an open like wild bill and a random open um cutter because i did a re i did some customs that required cutter to be involved in it right so yeah. like but for the most part all of my collection is carded for 25th through to 50th isn't That's that crazy, crazy. yeah i I collected Star Wars Power of the Force 2 carded, and yeah. I realized as it was going on, you know, as it got toward the end of me buying that, part of the reason why I wasn't as thrilled with seeing additional Luke Skywalkers and additional uh, other characters was the fact that I didn't feel that connection with the toys right, right. that I would if I had opened them. So I just kind of gave up um, doing mint on card. I mean, sometimes I'll buy something. If I think it looks amazing, the package, I'll buy an yeah. extra one. Or if it goes clearance, maybe I've bought some extra ones that I intended to use for customs and didn't, and then they're around. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I open everything. That's, yeah, I'm, it's funny, isn't it? Um, and I just I just assumed everyone in the in the kind of clique in that, you know, the group of the friends that I made at Joke on yeah. was kind of the same way. And then you start talking to people about stuff and they everyone has different collecting focuses, yeah. different like, you know, the ways they, you know, they, they might have one on card and one loose. I was doing that a little for a little while and in the end I just just it was just on card at that point. I just stopped doing the loose thing. And you know, some people would collect like multiples of everything which would blow my mind like especially when we were kind of in the the heyday of that 4 inch modern period where the club were kicking out 300 figures a year <laughs> yeah. like you know stuff like that it was it, yeah it's it was interesting to see everyone's different takes on collecting and um yeah and now everyone's just like getting pummeled with product again at really high price points yay um anyway 
we also got one extra little additional um, special was that the great Tonino, Tony from the G.I. Joe brand team, posted on his Instagram the kind of render of this, which we hadn't seen. It's th they, they did this completely out of order. So the last thing we get to see is the render that we usually get to see first, which is funny here, isn't it, Pat? Um, but again, nothing really to, to, to kind of discuss necessarily because it's everything we've seen already. Uh, but I don't know. Um, it kind of it's it, as a completist at heart. It's nice to see that we're getting, you know, the marketing aspect completed, <laughs> right? Because that seems to be missing a lot for the vamp for the his stuff, right? Uh, oh yeah, we don't have we don't have yeah. we, we have slightly different versions of renders for them, don't we? We don't have this, but we have like individual fi figure renders um, with their loadout, but on a completely different style different background the the hiss and the driver were never on i don't think a sort of render like this were they no for obvious no. reasons because we had like it, it, it oh they opened with loads of images and pictures and everything so yeah um yeah i know justin's having a hard time trying to locate some stuff for the uh yeah for the website that's that's what made me aware of it yeah yeah absolutely um okay so that is um, pretty much all the new stuff for um, Walmart, Walmart Collector Cons, Shockwave and the, and the Night Pursuit. Let's have a look at the other big news story, which is WonderCon announcement news. Yes, WonderCon have been dropping announcements left, right and center. And then, of course, Emily backed it up very recently, uh, I think today, actually with her post on Instagram about them attending WonderCon. So Emily will probably be uh, the um, person at this particular panel for Hasbro's brand panels for G.I. Joe. Um, I'm not sure if Lenny's going yet. We'll probably find out very soon. But we do know that um, Emily will be there. Now, WonderCon, this isn't something that they've necessarily done in the past with Classified, is it, Pat? We haven't had Classified announcements at WonderCon before, have we? You know, I, I don't remember. Not I don't remember any of that. But I, I get confused sometimes what all these other conventions are. Yeah, uh, WonderCon's not one that's normally on my radar, so I'm going to say no. I think we've had obviously MCM. They've done it in London. They've done it for right. obviously PulseCon, obviously SDCC, all of the big, all the NYCC. We've had it as well. Um, in yeah, but they usually have a. I mean, like Toy Fair, obviously, is another one. Um, but yeah, this is definitely a new new one for WonderCon. But Hasbro will be there, and they will be doing a action brands kind of panel, like an all of their action brands. It will be on Saturday, March the thirtieth, at three p.m. to four p.m. I'm guessing that's Pacific Standard Time because uh, this is in Anaheim. So um, I, I imagine it's going gonna, it's gonna to be on PST. So it will be six o'clock um, Eastern. Um, a little bit later in the evening, Pat. We'll get you know. I wonder if there'll be any like <laughs> any leaks before then to ruin it. Um, but anyway, Hasbro hosts an action-packed toy panel with brand marketing team members revealing exciting new products, giving fans a first look across its iconic action brands. The panel will include select product reveals from Ghostbusters Entertainment, celebrate the 40th anniversary of Transformers with the new Studio Series figures, and announce new Cobra team members joining the GI Joe Classified Series line. In addition, the panel will bring updates on the Hasbro lines inspired by Star Wars, including the Black Series and the Vintage Collection, and Marvel, including exciting news about the Marvel Legends product line. Right then, bud, let's talk G.I. Joe Classified Cobra team members joining the series. Um, obviously, we have, you know, unofficial leaks to look at, don't we? Uh, not that one. That Not that one. Not that one. Not that one. Where's the unofficial leaks? Oh, it was that one. Sorry, I went past it. So in regards to them revealing stuff that isn't officially revealed, could you see maybe Road Pig Heart Wrencher mentioned in this one? Yeah, it's possible that there will be not any any real news to, you know, if you're a diehard paying attention, but... Uh... I don't know. I, I kind of would think that they would try to do something, like even if it's just a name reveal. They oh, they'll do be that. doing. I, I think there'll be render reveals. Honestly, I think they'll. I think they'll be revealing I'm sure. all sorts of stuff. But yeah, we could maybe see a render reveal of one of these characters or a name reveal of somebody else. I don't. I, 
what I'm saying is they're aware of what has leaked. Yeah. I think that we will get something in addition to that. But oh, it's definitely. also possible that the bulk of what we see will be in line with what has leaked. Do you know what I yeah, mean? That's, yeah. Yeah, I can say that. Um, uh, a lot of people were kind of getting confused with the wording on this, thinking that when it's like Cobra t new Cobra team, I think is what people were looking at. And it's like, you kind of got to extrapolate a little bit here because it's just going to be members of Cobra. I don't think it's going to be a new team necessarily that's being introduced based on the, the grammatical structure of the sentence. So, and if it was a... If it was a Cobra team, it would be a new Cobra team, not just new Cobra team members right. joining the GI Joe Classified series. So I think, um, I just want to make that very clear. I don't think we're going to be seeing a new team necessarily. I think we're going to be just seeing new Cobra characters being introduced into the Classified series line. Um, I only say that because I saw a lot of comments the other day about, oh, what new Cobra team could it be? And it's like, I don't no. think that's what they're saying technically. Yeah, no, I, I agree. But it is interesting that they bother to specify that it's going to be Cobra because they could just say, and new G.I. Joe classified series figures. Yes, and absolutely. not be specific as to whether or not they're Joes or Cobras. They are they seem to be uh, already aware of exactly what it is that's going to be revealed there. And does this mean that there will not be any G.I. Joe characters revealed? That's another good point, isn't it? I mean, I, I could see, right, Personally, I think I could see a kind of like tie-in with what we've already had, but no pre-orders for. So the retro beachhead snow serpents and cobra eels and the cobra ferret, I could see those possibly going up for pre-order around the same time. Now, this is March yeah. 3rd, right? And April the 4th, we have this, what is clearly a G.I. Joe Entertainment Earth drop zone kind of like hint. Now I know that the last hint that I thought might be a triple T wasn't and the three and three quarters they were talking about was Star Wars related. That's totally fine. That, you know, an easy mistake to make. Um, but on this one, having Yo and Joe in the uh, <laughs> highlighted in the uh, this blurb, blurb makes me think this is almost certainly going to be G.I. Joe related pre-order drop. Now the 4th of April obviously doesn't follow too far after the 30th of March. And what happened last year with MCM, we had reveals followed by pre-orders, um, like later in the week. And it was about yeah. that amount of time afterwards as well. So I think that the, there might be some sort of lineup here where we get some new Cobra team members revealed, like a name only, or possibly even digital render, Pat. I think you're right on that one. And I think that we might also get like, oh, and pre-orders are going to be dropping for beachhead snow serpent eels and the cobra ferret is my that's what i'm expecting is what i'm what i would say i don't know but that's what i'm expecting i i totally agree i think you're right i think it's about time that they yeah I, and i do kind of appreciate that heads up of what's going to be um available for pre-order so yeah i think that you're you're absolutely right that's what we're, that's most definitely what's happening um i that's where yeah and, and now with that said, and what we expect and what we think is the most likely um, situation there, Pat, given, let's throw let's throw this into a different realm. Let's go into what would you be most excited to hear join, like from a Cobra perspective, joining the Classified series, who would buzz your berries that we haven't had unofficial leaks on, that we haven't had actual name onlys? Are there any characters out there that haven't been done yet that you would be like, hell yes, Please, and you know, pre or instant pre order, even though I don't do that You're anymore. Talking like a night viper or something like that. Oh, yes, the night slash jungle viper kind of vibe. Yeah, uh, I, well, I keep those very separate, but but I think that you're, I think you're right since they're very well, they kind of they kind of join the join those together. It's weird, isn't it? Toy. You're right, they are completely separate, like, like figures and characters and everything but the fact that they both have the same deco and the fact that the the long you know we um the kind of night vision monocular type thing going on as well oh yeah they have that too yeah there are there are definitely some similarities between the two you're right it felt like for me that was the um 
kind of like the pursuit of Cobra upgrade update for the Night Viper, effectively. That's what it felt like, like to me. Almost like a, a, a jungle sort of thing. But but I guess the, the Dio did actually have them uh, in, a, in an urban, like against that one Hiss tank. Do you, do you recall Absolutely. seeing that? Yes, I Where do remember that. The, what was behind it. That was a really I cool love, costume. I loved the fact, that was kind of like, that was really nice that they did that for that that era of figures because we hadn't seen um or like yeah we hadn't really seen a lot of dio stuff in the production um like in the in the in the marketing for a lot of the stuff that had come prior we'd right. seen like the okay they'd done like a couple of like cheeky ones here and there like a couple of magazine ads that had like the the seven packs on like desert and and an arctic yeah. backgrounds yeah and they had like little things like that, but not like it wasn't done that often. And then when we got those fold out leaflets in the Pursuit of Cobra, which had, yeah, we had like beachhead hiding from, uh, like like a uh, was it like a uh, was it a rage? I want to say was in that. I can't, shot? I can't remember. I think that you're right, but I can't remember. Um, but they had some amazing dio shots in those those leaflets, and and I'm kind of really happy that they've done they've gone really hard with that in the classified era like or you know the dio shots are really what makes me kind of really excited i think and i love that they do that um with everything but uh yeah i like that it kind of shows what what the design team thinks about how some of the gadgets work you know like especially with that jungle viper it kind of was a demonstration of hey we kind of think that this technology he has reflects what's behind him so it's a bit more insight into even what's going through their mind as a designer. And that's a big plus. I um, like, you know, obviously before we had that conversation about the snow serpent, um, you know, gear and retro and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, before that, I would probably have, have bet money on them doing kind of vintage style designs on the classified retro style uh, card backs. And then, you know, we'd see like, yeah, uh, so uh, in my head, I would have I would have happily seen when we're talking about night vipers and jungle vipers, a night viper that looks like a night viper on the classified card on the retro card, and yeah. then a jungle viper done as a deluxe figure in the classified series that utilised similar aspects of the retro, but obviously in incorporated all those cool sci-fi like updated future warfare yeah. elements and stuff. Yeah. Anyway. Um, but now I, I don't know. I, I kind of see them just doing something that hits the middle, that that kind of catches both of those at the same time, almost like you know the Night Viper, but with the crazy futuristic kind of like. Oh, I would want uh, the Night Viper to be be without that stuff. I, I no, just kind of like the way that he originally looked. Totally, but that's what I expecting they're going to do. Like I, I don't think they're going to do like I said, a Night Viper on retro card and a and another version that has all the i think they'll mix it somewhere in between is what i think yeah. they're going to do well obviously the night vipers um that that goggle that goes down is kind of up for change because now that thing's ridiculously large if you're just right. using it for night vision but it probably is some sort of telescope as well well i guess it, i guess the the attachment probably is has always meant to be a telescope huh well, they could. They could have, you know how they've done Wolf Spider with the fold down thing on the right. helmet and everything. Yeah. They could do that and have two attachments. So one is like a like a you know a long toilet roll holder and the other one is uh <laughs> and the other one is the kind of one that Wolf Spider comes with. They could prob or, probably probably do something long. Yeah, I mean they could have two attachments or just have it uh be something that, that has like two flip down elements or something that flips down and also spins, maybe. Oh, that'd be friggin' cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would be cool. Uh, yeah, there's, I mean, personally, I'm with you. I want both separate. I want a Night Viper over here, and I want a Jungle Viper over here. Totally with you on that one. I don't know that I'm the just, design team necessarily sees those as as related, though. They well, they might they might do and they might not. They might do by like default by the way it looks visually. They might like not understand that they're two separate things, or they might right. see them like you say because you can't access them on the same like say yo joe name page because they're two separate names the jungle viper might yeah. get like lost a little bit possibly i don't know i don't know 
I don't know. I just kind of always viewed them as personally. I always viewed them as separate. Like even when he was out, it was like, well, there's similarities there, but I didn't necessarily see them as actually related characters personally. Yeah. Um, but do you think cool. that this possibility of it being called Cobra, does that kind of eliminate the possibility of like an Annihilator or a Targat because those are technically, or an Undertow because those are technically Iron Grenadiers because we're moving into I, that Iron Grenadier territory. Yeah, and, and obviously we know we've got the Iron Grenadier bats. We know we've got the Iron Grenadier mm -hmm. coming. But although we, we know we, we know the Iron Grenadier is coming officially and we know unofficially, sorry, that the Iron Grenadier bat is coming. But... Um, they could that could be one that they drop, but you're right. Like, how how much is the person copywriting this, and the and the person like informing them of what they're going to be revealing? You, this is something you've got to kind of take into consideration sometimes. How much is, are they both informed of right. the the the, the specific, specificity that we are aware of of all those different subgroups of Cobra, and right. Are they saying Cobra to make it be an all-encompassing catch-all phrase as a marketing situation? Or are you right in, in identifying that they might be being specific here and excluding Mars and, you know, the Dreadnoughts? And, right. I'm guessing yeah. that they're not being that specific, that we could actually be hearing about the Iron Grenadier Bat, for example. Yeah. The other thing that it could insinuate... Is that it's another? It's a brand new Cobra team member, right? Oh yeah, but some a character we've like a, a wolf spider or a mole rat or something mole rat. We've not heard of before. Yeah, that could be. Um, Plastic Battles has made a good point here, actually, that kind of uh, solidifies what we've just been talking about there about the the distinction marketing wise. He says, I think the team didn't make a huge distinction between Iron Grenadiers and Cobra metalhead packaging, as an example. Uh, totally cool. They do obviously put Iron Grenadiers on there, but you're right. It's It's got like a Cobra logo in the background and all that kind of stuff. It's not like a specifically, you know, they didn't make much of a uh, uh, yeah, song and dance about it necessarily. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, I think that there's a good point to be made there, Pat, that we could be seeing new team members completely. Um, the one point that was made, which I think is a really good one, is the theme, the thematic aspect of WonderCon being a very, like, you know, fantasy-based kind of, like, convention. Are you talking right? Globulus? Might be. Or Pythona. Or the Royal Guards, for example. Now, yeah. I'm only saying that because you know how we've got, if we go to the, let's go to the leaked list, because we've seen all this crap before. I've talked about it before. Let's, you know, we don't have, you know, you've seen it. It's Nothing's been updated. It's fine. Now, if you look at this list, we have Nemesis Immortal, Atlas Deluxe, right? And we have Whip Snakes 2-pack on the other side. Now, the fact that Nemesis Immortal is Cobra La related, the fact that the numbers follow on from each each other, G0335, G0336, the fact that Atlas and Whip Snakes are thematically connected as professional lacrosse team names, and none of the others are, make has to kind of insinuate that there's some sort of thematic connection between them. Now, we've found out in the past that we've been wrong to assume certain things, but usually with thematic connections, there's a reason for it. And this is a Whip Snakes 2-pack. We know it's a Troop Builder 2-pack. Could we be looking at Royal Guards? Possibly. Could that be revealed at WonderCon? Possibly. Like, I, I'm just saying, could we, we could we be seeing a bit of a Cobra Laugh theme going uh, on here? I think if, if you were going to infer anything from the code names, uh, yes, I, I would think that you're right. It could also be, even though it's a 2-pack, it could be two different characters, right? It doesn't necessarily. I mean, they well, have made, been making the two only, packs. Yeah, the only the only reason we know it's not a two pack of different characters is because it's specifically a troop builder two pack. That's the information that we're aware oh, of. Oh, okay. So thing. you already know that the globulus yeah. is not going to be one of the two. It's not going to be a globulus python a two pack, which would be amazing. But it's not. I don't think it's that. Although, if you're going to make like it, one of the things that dri has driven me crazy about Pythona in the past that they that they don't um, that they've not made her so so often 
right. is that there there actually is repaint potential for her. Like yeah. there are other, you know, females in Cobra Law. Like just make that figure too. I think yep. that people would buy it. So maybe this could be some sort of uh, new concept of the, uh, you know, with a, a male and female kind of thing like they did with. Oh, yeah. Um, with the. Steel core. Steel, Steel core. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Oh. So it could be something you, like mate, that. You, and I mean, they did it also with the Blue Ninjas. So. Does this mean, does this mean though, that you've like now given me an even worse expectation that's never going to be fulfilled where I'm expecting a male and female royal guard, which would be phenomenal. And yeah. now, now that you've implanted that, like one of those psychic motivators in my brain. All I can think about is that's all it's going to be now. Thanks, Pat. Yeah. Well, hopefully. I mean, you're the one who who led me to think that. Oh well, not just that, but I have in the past ruined your life by giving you uh, unreal expectations, haven't I? So you're just getting back at me for doing that, really. Yeah. I think. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yes. No, I think that I. Yeah. Um. I, I'm. I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying the evidence points towards a possible thematic connection there. Um, we'll see. We'll see what it is. Uh, lots of people saying um, Cobra Last Citizen, says Barking Fridge. Yeah. A scientist and exactly. a pilot. Kind of fun, wouldn't it? Um, needs Python versions of Ripcord and Airborne. Ooh. 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 I like your thinking figure six pack. I like your figure thinking there a lot. Yeah. Um, Stanley has asked, has Lab Tees at WonderCon? I don't think so, Stanley. I think the, the HasLab will be probably teased at the beginning of Yojo June and revealed at the end of Yojo June. That's what I would fully expect. In much this we we'll get a lead up. So maybe well, well, actually, I'll 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 recant what you're saying there. So what I'm saying there, Stanley, and say that maybe they start the marketing process for the lead up to the next HasLab at WonderCon. There's a possibility they do that. And it could be some sort of like, you know how they've done in the past, Pat, with those like um, little kind of like uh, images that had like kind of text on it saying like this operative has broken into, do you know what I mean? Do you remember when it was like oh, they were using yeah. the code, the internal code words and it was really pissing you off twice because yeah. they weren't using the character names and they were using the internal code words that we didn't know. <laughs> that kind of stuff. And like Storm Shadow infiltrating the the Hasbro offices and stuff like that. So yeah, maybe they could start the process of um, of the teases, possibly Stanley. But I'm not sure if it will be like everyone will know what what's being talked about necessarily straight away. But we'll we'll see. We'll see. I'm not going to say no because I think that'd be cool. Um, RKW says if you tell us what Highway Pet is, then I might agree with your thesis. Says I, I can't tell you who Highway Highway Pet is, but um, I'm just trust me on that one, RKW. Trust me. Um, and down south seven seven does say I'm a little disappointed in the lack of updates for the dragonfly. No, no new transmission interception skits or anything. Yeah, like that's 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 what it that's what I was trying to explain. Uh, they're called transmission intercepted, aren't they? Um, but yeah, nothing like that so far. And I would expect the next update for the dragonfly will be soon, and it will be showing us the figures because we haven't seen the figures yet. We haven't seen ripcord. Glenda or Crazy Legs yet. I'm just assuming we have to see those before they start shipping. Right, Pat? Yes. I mean, at this point, it's just a matter of making us happy to see stuff and, right. and having fun with it. But we've already paid for it. We're already going to get it. Uh, if they really, really have to, I can totally see them focusing their energy on other things. If there hasn't, it's, you know, it's entirely possible they're just hasn't been time for those updates even though we do kind of expect them and yeah and i would like a more than teasers of what it's going to be just sort of a a reinforcement that progress is being made yeah you know that's totally. kind of the thing with a crowd fund hey you know we're still following through you're still getting that and here's our progress so that we kind of know what what timeline to expect of when to get it absolutely i couldn't agree with you more uh and i think a lot of people are you know, wanting um, definite like teasers on on the dragonfly. A lot of people in the comments are saying yeah. that. Um, yeah, I think so. Um, right, then that kind of brings us to the end of the classified talk, Pat. So now we're going to spend another hour talking about uh... <laughs> shout outs. Is that it? 
No, no. which we'll come no. to. Oh, the good, we're to the good part, the part that I'm going to enjoy. The good part. Unbelievable. Well, it's, all been good. it's all been good. I'm just kidding. This, That's this hilarious. Is where I get... I, yeah, I'm fired up. This is where that. this is where this is where you'll see physically see Pat's berries actually buzzing on the screen. Yes, guys, it's time for a little bit of a Super Seven update. Right. So yes, I had the extreme pleasure of uh, interviewing Brian Flynn from Super Seven on the 11th of March. Yeah, it was 3 11, 2024. I would put it 11 3 2024, but I've gone so American now. Everything's Americanized on the full force, uh, including myself. I've literally changed countries. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so spoke to, to Brian and he gave us some updates on Ultimates, on Reaction, on O Ring, on Joe Fest. Uh, really, really cool. And um, yeah. Let's get into it, Pat. The main points. Um, look at that. It's like, I, it's, like I, it's like I did this three minutes before we went live. Uh, the Brian Flynn interview main points. So Wave 4 Ultimates shipping very soon. He mentioned, I think, that they're probably going to be arriving at the end of March. So they'll be going out, uh, I'd imagine, very early April. So that's kind of exciting. And that is Zartan Gung-Ho, Baroness, and Stalker. I believe is the wave four. Okay, uh, is a pretty solid wave. In fact, the last two waves have been absolute bangers in terms of in, three as well, which is already in people's hands now as well. Another solid wave. Um, are you like? What are your thoughts at the moment with Ultimate? So you kind of um, are you vibing on them? I know I still have a wave on pre-order, and I'm not sure which wave it is. I thought I skipped only over only wave two. Because I just wasn't in at that point, and then I got some in hand, and it's like, well, maybe I will order these. I don't know. I, I didn't want to go to yet another scale, so I like the idea of the ultimates not coming out rapidly, and yeah, like yeah, also not yeah. canceling them because it's a very worthwhile toy line. I think, I think that it is one that people benefit from by having it in hand. If Super Seven's going to be at at toy shows. Maybe it would be nice if they just had one out that people could actually hold in hand and go, "Oh, these actually feel really nice because they do feel really sturdy." I like the leg construction for some reason on them, mm. like the way that the legs feel the, that they don't feel like um, too ratchety or junky, and then the way that the the texture is kind of contoured over like a the articulation. It's it's yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah, no, I have, to, I have to agree that the actual figures are incredible. A lot of people saying that Entertainment Earth are actually shipping Wave 4 already. So, oh, okay. uh, yeah, that's crazy. So, uh, yeah, now a, a lot of people kind of complain sometimes about the um, the distribution aspect. I can tell you, having worked um, in, like, that arena, that um, especially with the, in the industry as it is at the moment, it's not always an exact science getting it from one country and then distributing it in the way that they want to distribute it. Like if so there the, are so many times a lot of the, um, like the big distributors will get things direct from the factory. They're not going to get the product. Then it's not going all to super seven and then super seven are distributing it out. It's going all over the place. It's going to entertainment earth. It's going to big bad toy store. It's going to, you name it, whatever distributors you, you can think of, and then direct from the factory. And then other things, like, and then a, another shipment will go to Super 7 to fulfill their pre-orders. So it's like whoever gets it first doesn't usually hang about. Uh, whether whether they're supposed to or not, whether that's the rules or not, they don't always hold on to it. They just get it out. Uh, and it could be because of, like, space issues or, whatever, you know, uh, logistical issues. Uh, well, these things... Big bad toy store just really wants to hold on and, and enjoy my Arctic bat for that much longer because they <laughs> still haven't shipped it. Exactly. So it, it your diamond is another one. Yes, absolutely. Um, so yeah, it, it's one of those things where the plan is always to, you know, have them get it first and get it out to all the pre-orders and get the, the everyone who's ordered the, the whole set because they wanted the bonus pack. But yeah. sometimes the, the it just does not work out the way you want it to. And it, it's so many moving parts. It's not easy, is all I'm going to say. And I know it sucks for a lot of people who aren't getting it first. But, you know, at the end of the day, you'll get it. And I think that is 
the most important thing really in this uh, scenario. Um, but anyway, that is, uh, and I know they have kind of said that they want to be the ones to get it out first so that you are incentivized to order from them as well. Like not just to have the battle pack, but also to get it first. And I think that will work itself out in time. And Unf but unfortunately, it's one of those things where, yeah, it's difficult. Um, FC Viper says, we are never getting the Arctic bat. Crying, crying emoji. Um, yeah, I, I'm so happy I managed to snag one. Uh, and it wasn't through pre-order. Thanks to Nick at Indemon Toys for that one. Um, anyway, Wave 5 Ultimates is much further out. But we don't have a date yet, but it is, it's it's in the process, but there's no uh exact date. There's probably uh what do you call it? I didn't uh, I didn't press him on it because I was happy to get um the update that this one was happening so soon. Um, but five, there will be an update. The Super 7 do up ultimate email updates quite often, and you'll get a date on that one. But that wave is another banger. That's the Zartan Crimson Guard. No, not Zartan, that's the Crimson Guard cover girl roadblock major blood wave that is a that's another set of bangers right there isn't it not it like, is yeah uh, yeah yeah so uh yeah ultimates is still happening and there was a lot of people again in the comments saying like you know they think ultimates is is not going to happen anymore and then that was not the case and brian has well, some of the other ultimates I, i'm not sure about transformers right i i'm not sure if that's continuing is it Oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. I know they, they stopped the Simpsons as well, didn't they? I they stopped the Simpsons. Yeah, I think that there's been some stoppage, but not with GI Joe. Joe. Yeah, I think that it's still it's still ongoing. And personally, I, I'm fine with it. Like it says, it's wave five is further out with no date yet. Fine, you know, I, <laughs> I don't think it's fast. Yeah, yeah. Could, I'm kind if, of okay even if it... <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally. I'm I'm with you on that one. So yeah, that we that is happening. It will be coming still, and uh, there will probably be more ultimates revealed in the future. Uh, I I must also add uh, two. So yeah, ultimates is still happening, and the more ultimates to come. Trust me on that one. Um, we did talk about um, on we did actually talk about the Deke, the uh, Lady J, Scarlet, and Baroness uh, wave, which has actually been. I think called a wave number. Um, it's not part of their overall wave structural thing. It was more of a bonus for Joe Joe Day, but um, it has been incorporated as a wave. So these numbers might be confusing to people. Uh, but wave four, when I talk about wave four on here, I'm talking about um, what am I talking about for wave four? For uh, Zartan, Baroness, Gung Ho, Stalker, and for wave five, I'm talking about Major Blood, Crimson Guard, Roadblock, Cover Girl. Um, right. Now, the other thing we talked about was reaction, Pat. This was fun as well because he did reveal that there is a fourth figure in that wave. Uh, so they're minimizing, so they're minimizing the amount of reaction figures that they're re they're releasing, but they're still going to be doing them, but they will be slowing down. Um, and especially with O-ring kind of coming into the picture, there's going to be a kind of like situation where reaction changes from you know like on shelf at walmart and target and stuff and it will go to being um sold in other ways other partners other like from their website as well so reaction is going to get a slightly different rollout going forward and then o-ring will take over that space um is first of all we'll come back we'll come back to that little point in a second though but with the with the toy collector magazine cover pat were you happy to see some of those reveals on there mate well, I haven't seen the cover, but I see the list of them. Have you not so, seen the cover to Toy Collector? I don't think I have. I'm going to send you that now so you can see Tiger Force Wreckage in all his glory. But yeah, but continue on. Um, happy to see Palatoy Red Jackal in there too. Oh yeah, for sure. I, and I like how. Um, okay, I see. I see the cover now. You know what? I have oh. seen this. I just kind of forgot because I was so focused. <laughs> It's a little weird. I was so focused on the the snow serpent. Right, right. <laughs> because that is kind of how he appears in the cartoon. You know, they didn't yes. have a ton of color on them. Yeah. Uh, so I was really focused on that. And I like that I like the fact that they did that. That's that's yeah. cool. Um, yeah, he's got he's got um uh I wanna say 
the kind of dark blue boots as well that you can't quite see on the cover. They kind of hide behind the uh, one of the things on this on the on the cover. But um, yeah, I think it's like again matches pretty close um, with the Sunbow version, which is really neat. Um, yeah, and again, yeah. red jackals. It's kind of one of those things like we talk with with red laser. It's it's nice to get those in a style that. Uh, that blends then in with the vintage palatoy stuff even though you know we already have this figure as an o-ring character this is just kind of providing an option so it has yeah. some purpose and i mean that's that's a lot of what we've said with a lot of the reaction stuff that the gi joe we want to see it in o-ring but it's some of this stuff isn't without purpose i am curious though where uh, you said we talk about that later right i am curious where reaction is going to go once there is a an o-ring gi joe available so it sounds like from from what i could gather from the interview is that it won't be necessarily at target and walmart as as much as it was there might be the odd like exclusive here and there i'd imagine or you know like a special thing they're doing but it they'll be doing they'll still be doing reaction releases but they'll be um probably smaller waves and mm -hmm. i imagine going he said other partners so i imagine like other um you know like i don't know like fye or i'm trying to think of yeah. other kind of places that sell reaction but there's fye there's like other other kind of make kind of bigger store like other stores and dist and um wholesalers and distributors and stuff they'll still have it i imagine but um in terms of walmart and target it's not going to be as prominent because they're going to be utilizing that space for the o-ring rollout so yeah, I, I could see maybe gamestop wanting some stuff GameStop, that, that yeah, to me would be one that would make a lot of sense yeah, uh, but really, if you ignore the actual waves, like just mentally forget about the actual waves of reaction figures, there already were several exclusives this year. So if we're getting just fewer reaction figures in general, it's almost like we'll just get still get that exclusive stuff. But if there is a retailer as well, maybe it'll be yeah, you know, we're not more, losing out. Yeah, uh, uh, customers probably aren't losing out. It's just kind of like a, a, a right. slight change up of where you might get it um, or yeah. how often you might see it in, on shelves and things like that. I'm, I'm fine with them slowing down with it, though, as well. Yeah. I mean, I think he I think he said the number. They were in the 90s, I want to say. In well, terms that's of, what he uh, said, but I think that he counts each of the army builders as one figure, like each variant army builder as, right. as one figure. Or is What's that count? Like six or seven. Oh, What's I don't know. You know what? I'll look, but I haven't updated this list in a long, your, long time. That's your homework for next week, Pat, is to give us oh, the number of reaction. Give, a, give everybody the number for reaction. I could do that. but <laughs> Someone probably can in the comments, actually. That would be kind of funny. Um, uh, anyway. Well, you know what? I have all the way up through the wave that includes General Hawk and Crimson Guard, which is like wave seven. Okay. And that has us up to 123 figures. <sighs> Yeah, or maybe it's 122 because line one of my spreadsheet is probably name of figure. So I think it's 122. <laughs> yeah, it's got to take that into consideration. Yes. That so is I think a it's 122. Lot. And, and I, a... I've not written down everything. No. So. Jeez, man. Okay. Do you count do you count the SDCC exclusive sets as one, or do you count them as individual figures? Individual figures. Wow. Okay, yeah. So like the uh, the pyramid of darkness uh, uh, robot and uh, shipwreck and snake eyes in disguise and right and like snake eyes because the disguised one that was carded is a little bit different, different. than the one yeah. yeah those are two different figures um, even the issue twenty one snake eyes but the figure was actually different so yep yep we had had the tattoo on show didn't he and the ripped sleeve and everything right which i yeah. didn't realize was i just thought it was on a different card color back initially for the longest yeah. time well, and then it was like oh no different. there's a there's a there's a rip in his pants in his shirt not his pants um yeah so <laughs> i don't know why why would i go there uh That's yeah fun. and obviously there is a there is a fourth uh target exclusive figure in that wave as well which we can speculate to high heaven but we did have that leaked list um a little while ago did we not that had i want to say well snow serpent was on it so that's check that's one done tiger force wreckage was on it check that's another one that was uh, leaked a while back uh and i say leaked listings it was listings put on by bbts as well it wasn't like a 
uh, you know, it, they just put them up early as, as they always, as they, as they want to do. And so, yeah, you've got Snow Serpent, Tiger Force, Reg uh, Palatoy, Red Jackal was on there too. So those three yeah. checked out. The other ones on that leak list were, were Deke Lady J and Deke Scarlet, okay. which is interesting because we got that Deke Baroness as well, didn't we? The retro, uh, sorry, the reaction yeah. one. So we know that even though we got those in Ultimates, that they are definitely talking about reaction on those listings. So there's a Deke Lady J and a Deke Scarlet that could be that fourth uh, exclusive figure. But then we also had Serpentor was on that list. Um, there was a, f who else was on that list? Uh, Serpentor was on that list. I don't remember. Oh, there was another, no, that was something else. That was an yeah, and, and I'm definitely going to have to go back and make this list because if some of this stuff runs the risk of being uh, canceled, I will want to have some record of that. Um, I don't. But... I, yeah, I don't personally think there will be a cancellation as such. I think what they'll do is they'll spread out those leaks. Okay. Um, oh, here, here we go. So it was Deke Lady J. It was Dana from the October Guard. Um, it was Deke Scarlet. I prefer saying Deke RKW because it's hilarious. Um, <laughs> well, Deke says Deke. Yeah, exactly. They say at the end of the at thing. At the end of it, they say Deke. On um, some oh, shows, not others. There's, there's another couple here that we didn't say before. Obviously, Palatoy Red Jackal was on that part of that leak listings. Uh, Snow Serpent, as I said before. Serpentor, as I said before. The Skeleton Warrior from one of the Skeleton Warriors would be from the um, from the exclusive set taken out and be single carded. And I imagine there'd be a difference to it, though. For some reason, no, there must be. Maybe it'd be glow in the dark. I don't know. Um, Cobra Mortal was the other one. Oh, I mean. right. I do remember talking about that. Yeah. And then Tiger Force Wreckage was the last one. So the fact that we've had Tiger Force Wreckage, Palatoy Destro, Sunbow, Snow Serpent revealed on Toy Collector magazine means that one of them, Lady J, Dana, Scarlet, Serpentor, Skeleton Warrior, Cobra Mortal could be could be in there as that makes as sense that. to me it, it feels like um with that much stuff still in the pipeline that they would just be trying to fit in a figure that would make sense to to fit in and maybe hold the rest of them back to have a solid wave like maybe maybe don't put serpentor out because i think that he'd be a key figure yeah so we've got one two three four five. we've got six possible figures that it could be for that fourth exclusive right if we take one away that leaves five and if we're doing waves of four, that might leave one as an exclusive. Does that as as in a as in a different exclusive, like for something else, not necessarily for Target or right. for the wave? So right. we we end up with what sounds to me like a couple of waves and an exclusive and then a separate exclusive. That sounds quite realistic to me, honestly. Um, so yeah, I, I think we just I think we'll see those figures again as a, as another wave further down the line. Yeah, I wish um, place that had taken off for them that. That initial vehicle that they did with Snake Eyes, um, it sat around quite a long time. And that made yes. me kind of sad because it was definitely an opportunity to get some obscure stuff. And, and talking about Serpentor, man, like just a lab of like uh, like tubes for Serpentor to be in, like a playset for Serpentor is what I, I think would be really cool. But I don't know. I guess maybe I'm, I'm dreaming again about them being able to make stuff that are exclusive to other stores like like how would some of that stuff go over if you've also got an o-ring line to support it you know maybe yeah. some of the figures that we included if they could do a play set again um it, it seems like it would keep the cost down i would assume yeah. to include a reaction figure instead of a, a an o-ring figure and if you had like you know just a serpentor all wrapped up well then maybe it would just make sense if he's going to stay in that tube most of the time anyway to do that one that way. I, I don't know. I'm just spitballing here and hoping that things pan out a bit. As I said, where we started, this is the part that I was going to get most excited about. <laughs> um, no, I, I totally agree with you. I'd love to see, I'd love to see kind of more of those kind of vehicle play yeah. sets. Sort of I'm things. hoping things get reworked because they're able to um, have reaction feel supplemental to the O-ring line. Yeah, like it definitely. Works, it works to support it. That's what I'm hoping. Yeah. Um, RKW said it sounded like Reaction will only be con exclusives now. Um, I think, like, as we mentioned, I think there's, he did mention other partners. 
um, as well. So it, it will be it will be sold in other places as well. Um, it could be and I'm... even just one of the websites that wants it though too. True. Like maybe BBTS has seen them move well, so they're like, "We'll give us a couple more waves or something." Who knows? Yeah, yeah, could be, could be that uh, aspect. Absolutely. Um, I still think you'll be able to get them from BBTS and Entertainment Earth for sure, and those kind of places. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anywho, um, I think that is everything in terms of that Target Fourth exclusive. Now, um, there will be exclusives for Joe Fest, he mentioned, but no mass device as rumored. So, as I expect, I, can I just say, as I suspected, when that started doing the rounds and people were saying it's going to be the mass device, I was like, guys, listen to the clip. Like, even without context, listen to the clip. He, he's, it's almost like he was clutching at topics to talk about with G.I. Joe. Do you know what I mean? Like he was he was saying he wants to talk, you can talk right. to the fans about the mass device. And I'm like, 100%, like that is, you know, I'll tell you now, that is exactly what he, where he was going with it. And lo and behold, that was exactly where he was going with it. Um, there, there will be Joe Fest exclusives, but the mass device is not going to be uh, the one that everyone just jumped on in that that interview. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of glad that I stuck with my guns on that one honestly. And I, I wouldn't be drawn into the mass device uh, speculation on that one. But right. he says speculating about every single other thing going. Um, what I mean, are, are you kind of excited for Joe Fest exclusives here then, bud? Uh, you know, there it was nice to have many years off from worrying about going to a specific part of the country <laughs> To buy some stuff that I could only buy there, and then being paranoid about not getting it later. I'm, I'm hoping that they've made ample quantities. I think that having an exclusive that starts at a show, and kind of um, makes that item a little bit more fun or memorable, is great. Uh, you know, to show up with something new at a show, I think, helps to sell it, and I just don't want people to feel. I, I don't want people to be left out if they don't get to make it to Joe Fest is is the thing for me. But I'm going to be there, so I'm going to be buying it. That's going to happen. <laughs> um, and, and, yeah, I, I don't anticipate that being the case, though. It seems like a lot of times anymore, especially like stuff, the, the way San Diego Comic-Con exclusives have gone over the years, they generally are available online, even if it's, even if it's briefly. So well, I'll be seven. curious to see what happens. Super 7, especially for SDCC and those kind of shows, they have everything on their website at the same time. Right. And it usually stays around a lot. So I imagine they'll do the same thing with Joe Fest. That's what I'm hoping. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, that, to me, makes it all just a big win-win because those items do feel a little, a little more special. And it, it does give a little bit of an outlet for it to be a little bit of a weirder item that you wouldn't be able to do at mass retail, right? Yeah, absolutely. I'd, I would love a mass device, don't get me wrong. But... Yeah. Um, but like again, interpreting what he was saying in that interview, uh, I definitely took it a different way than I think a lot of people did. I think what what happens is you hear keywords, and we're kind of like yeah. we're definitely designed now, <laughs> or at least, at least kind of conditioned, I should say, to like pick up on you know like skim reading. No one reads anything anymore. It's like get the main points. Like I've, what have I just done on this? I've literally. I've I've minimized the entire interview into five main points. That's what that you know like that's what Yeah, but I, we did start this with me saying, "Hey, hear it straight from his mouth. Go and watch that interview." Yeah, true. But this is what this is what we do as as human beings. We kind it of is, like we yeah. skim read, we we take information that like that that kind of I don't know, sometimes we take information to make it what we want to hear sometimes. Like, for example, looking at a figure render background and seeing snake armor in it. Do you know what I mean? Like, right. <laughs> I do yeah. it. Everyone does it. It's totally, you know, you, you kind of, yeah, we all do that kind of stuff. But anyway, go check out the interview with Brian. It's awesome. And uh, thanks again, Brian and team, for letting us do that. Unfortunately, we couldn't get it out, Kitty said, before the pre-order for the Ultimates ended. So as we're talking about the pre-orders and get your pre-orders in and all that kind of stuff, I put a big thing on the screen that says pre-order closed because I couldn't be bothered to edit it out. It was easier me doing that than editing it out. Um, and it didn't, it like, it was like, it was such a mission trying to work out what would sound natural. Where can we come back in? 
that was missed. We can't do that anymore. So like, you know, you've been there, Pat, with editing. Like sometimes it's easier just to kind of stick a visual cue on there. So right. if you're listening, yeah, if you're listening to it though and not watching it, I, my apologies. That's actually what happened to me. I, I was listening to it in the car. So I, this is new information to me. <laughs> Genius. Um, anyway, did I miss? Oh, I did. I've, I've written Finn instead of Flynn. Um, the reason I did that Future Fortress Maximus is because, as I said at the start, I I wrote this in about three minutes. I designed that graphic in about three minutes before we started. So that was my that's my bad. I've spelt Flynn wrong on there. I didn't even notice. You're the first person to say something, I think. Um, but anyway, yeah, you my, my apologies to Brian. Collector too, didn't you? Is that right? Or toy collectors toy... spelt like that, I think. I think they, really? they cut out the I think they cut out the O. Oh no, they're... you're right. They are, yeah. Okay, so yeah, you got that, that right. I, I got that right and spelt Brian Flit I've spoke Flynn wrong. Uh, I just I just missed the L. That's what happened. Um unfortunately on on Photoshop, it's not um What's the word? There's no autocorrect, so I can right. I can't even blame it on that. Anyway, um, yeah, we'll just call him Brian Finn from now on. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> yeah, go check out that interview with Brian Finn, no Flynn of Super Seven. Uh, I'll just put that on where it's spelled correctly. There you go. Um, and uh, yeah, we will move on to shout outs now. Then Pat, um, yeah, we ready? I'm ready. Yes. Ready to shout. Have you tried Hoarder yet? No? Well, you need to. If you have a collection of things and want to create a fun and easy way of organising it and, of course, showing it off, then get involved. You can post items and build collections and you can drop a status like getting a fun delivery or seeing some awesome related stuff on your travels. Build your collections with Hoarder. The app is free to download on Google Play and the App Store, so what are you waiting for? Get to hoarding. Jeremy's like, um, no, no, I know RKW's like, no O ring talk, but we did talk. I mean, like, we, we talked about the fact that O ring will be taking over from um, reaction on shelves, but yeah, that's as far as we got in terms of um, information from Brian on O ring. He can't talk about anything else, unfortunately. That's all we got. I'm just really excited about all the O ring stuff, though. I mean, that that's what I'm, I, I, I guess I was talking about O ring as a way of, about reaction as a way of figuring out how that's going to uh, come to a a simmer, be put on the back burner, I guess I should say, in favor of O-Ring, because I am very excited for O-Ring stuff. I just don't know oh, what that's... to talk about since we don't have more information. That is a good point from RKW. He did mention that prototypes would be at Joe Fest. He did, he did mention that on the interview with me that I could for the be... O-Ring stuff? Yeah, so O-Ring prototypes will be on show at Joe Fest. <sighs> I'm looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really looking forward to see what they what they come up with. You might, you might, you know, you might even be able to get to hold one or two, mate, and and see it and touch it. That would be nice. Just do it in the. Just go around the back and say, "All right, Brian, it's Pat here from the Full Force podcast." Um, if you just drop Full Force, he'll know exactly what's going on. If he just lets um, me slobber on one, just <laughs> get excited and drool. <laughs> Amazing. Um, uh, Mark says we got a clearer idea of what he didn't want to do for O-Ring. That's a good point, actually. Yeah, the only new characters situation. Um, well, it wasn't only new characters. He actually said, what was it, Pat? I kind of miss kind of he's not, directed He's not you, interested in doing reissues. Yeah, so, like, or, or like, example, was it stuff that we've already got? So, yeah. Correct. Yeah. So, like, I think that didn't, didn't you guys were talking about Red Jackal. And it's like Red Jackal's coming in reaction yeah. that's not something that he would do as an o-ring yeah, figure ring. because you can yeah. already even though it's a hard to get figure you can already go buy that so why would he make it yeah yeah that's it pretty much that's all the o-ring talk done so thank thanks to rkw for uh for kind of like pressing the issue on that yeah you're totally right to do so because there was a little bit more o-ring Talk in I there. could talk. I could spend hours talking about all the O-ring stuff. I do want to see proven. Um, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. And I did point at the Kraken at one point on mine and say, "Hey, you could do, you could do old cheeky Kraken in the O-ring line." Yeah, Kraken. 
And thank you. I like. Why didn't I say? Oh, I can't believe I missed that opportunity. <laughs> How did I miss that opportunity? Unreal. Unreal. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, right. We are technically into shout outs now, Pat. So go ahead. Take it away. Let's do it. Shout out as always to Philip Whee! and my partner on articulated points. Uh, I think that we are well due for some some videos soon. So I need to I need to talk to him. He wanted to chat with me last night, but I was asleep. So <laughs> that's usually what happens at nights. Um, or actually, not for you. You're usually like up till about right. ridiculous o'clock in the morning, aren't you? Well, lately I've been having some sleep issues, so I'm I'm you know I woke up like two hours ahead of time for this, so that's not normal. Yeah, it's because you're like always excited to be on to talk about O-ring stuff. That's why. That's right. I am. We could do an entire O-ring special. We talked about doing it. We've done, we've we've done O-ring specials. We've done two O-ring specials on the Not monthly. enough O-ring specials. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you want to do that for this monthly then? Because we're, we're coming to we're, we're coming to that point where I'm like... I would be we need... ecstatic to talk about all the things I want from O-ring. Although it will be setting the bar of everything that I that I want, and it could be something entirely different, but I, let's I'm do that. Thrilled. Let's just, let's just, you pick, you, let's pick, let's just pick five O-ring figures we want for to see Ooh. in the O-ring line. Okay. I, let's I do would that. Be, I'd be down for that for sure. Okay. We'll do, we'll pick five. We'll talk them through and we'll do it on a live monthly at some point before the end of the month. How does that sound? That could be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll see if yeah. anyone else wants to get involved in the team. I'm sure Adam will want to jump on. I that. was going to say I would be curious to see what Adam would come up with. Yeah, I'm I'm sure that yeah, yeah for sure. Okay, if we do me, you, and Adam, it might be a situation where we have to choose less figures to talk about because <laughs> that could be a twelve hour episode. You know what? Maybe maybe if we do like our focus ones, like our ones that we really want the most, and, and then, then the rest, yeah. you can almost do it like render reveals and name only reveals, like okay, name well, only. Right? Yeah, let's do that. That sounds freaking amazing. Okay. We'll do we'll do some name only reveals that we want to see and we'll do some digital renders of the definite ones that yeah. Okay, that's amazing. Um yeah, cool. All right, yeah, shout out to Phil as well. Um and Adam as we shouted out on, on the show right now. But yeah, we'll be that's that looks like what the monthly is gonna be. I like I like that we think I like I like that I start thinking about the monthly as the month is coming to an end. Um, always bad maneuverage that. Um, but anyway, yeah, shout out to Phil. Also, shout out to my lovely wife, Kate, and Phoebes, who are upstairs at the moment. Um, and of course, our, the families in the US and the UK. It was Mother's Day very recently, so shout out to all those, all the mothers uh, in the UK, that is, by yeah, the way. You scared me. You scared yeah. me. UK Mother's Day. Like, oh no, what did I do? I forgot. And, and also, it was me dad's birthday on the 13th, so, so shout out oh, to me dad as well, David McLeod. David Maxwell McLeod, um, and uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, hope you had a hope you had a good one, even though we couldn't be there, and we'll be speaking to him this weekend as well. So uh, yeah, there's your shout outs for uh, for the for the birthdays and all that jazz, um, and then Brian Sour for the amazing graphics. Now we're getting a theme change next week, Pat, because it's spring next week. Can it is that? already. Yeah. Yep, twenty twenty first of March or the nineteenth, something like that. It, anyway, it's it happens before next week, um, but we are we're switching into spring, so we'll be getting some new graphics. You guys can um and er as to what those graphics might be when we drop them, but we usually yeah we usually do that the night the day before. Um, anyway, that's that, um, and also related to Brian, assembly required um, of course is happening in. Iowa, in Des Moines, Iowa, 13th annual. That's crazy. There have been 13 of them. And, of course, this particular event is going to be on the 8th and the 9th of November. And, Pat, are you ready for it? Oh, I, I no, well, I'm not ready for it. That's always There's always a lot of preparation for me that goes into assembly required, and I've started none of it. So, <laughs> no, I'm definitely not ready for it, but uh, I'm excited for it. It's always fun. I enjoy doing them. Totally. Um, I can't wait either. It's going to be, it's always a good show. Uh, we're definitely going to try and make that one. And of course, it's Iron Grenadieri Destro kind of related because obviously we've had, um, you know, the tartan in the background there. 
we've got the Death Stranding Grenadiers theme going on here. I, I think we can explain. I think we can expect to see a bit of Death Stranding Grenadierage uh, assembly right. requires theme this year. Um, also, uh, Figure Six Packer says use Chuckles T shirt for the spring break uh, theme. Well, Figure Six Pack, we've used every Chuckles design for our graphics uh, so far. We even went as far as to have Chuckles three times in a row. I think. I think we did Chuckles for spring. Um, for winter with that kind of winter style like night force version and then we did one as well for for a for some for yeah summer winter spring i think we've done uh chuckles designs so we're gonna move away from chuckles seeing as we've done it so often and we're gonna do something slightly different for this one um but yeah it should be fun um it's i, I always love our graphics change-ups it's kind of it feels like I I I've done minimal amounts of work, but it looks different, so it's it's updated. Do you know what I mean? Like I haven't had to change all the music and the videos and all that stuff. <laughs> right. I can, <laughs> I, I like can do the fact that. that we've already done all that chuckle stuff because it just uh, challenges Brian even further to Let's come up with another it. camo yeah. pattern or the character theme. Yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite ones actually was wetsuit for summer because I thought that was genius. Yeah, like splashing around in the pool, that kind of thing. Um, spring break should spring break should be pogo themed, says Jeremy. What do you think of that? Hmm. Why why pogo themed spring break? Spring. Oh, because it's spring break. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, if it's spring break, then it's got to be mask related, has it not, Pat? I was I was just picturing the pogo redecorated as a beach ball. Why are you saying that? <laughs> Ah, that's amazing. Uh, I need to do that in general. I just need to make that happen on Photoshop. Um, that's great. Now, I will um, also kind of, uh, as we're going through the shout outs, um, we, there's a bit of sad news to uh, report on this week, and that is the passing of um, Andy Cousins, um, ex Hasbro uh, UK design. And um, I, he, was in, he, he kind of did uh, a number of different roles. Um, at Hasbro UK, but he obviously did a lot of he did a lot of design work on there as well, including um, towards the back end of G One for Transformers as well, Pat um, in the UK for some exclusives that came out for the European market. Um, now, of course, as, as well as being connected to Transformers with Hasbro UK, he was also connected to GI Joe as well um, and did some work on uh, Action Man uh, for GI Joe as well, specifically. Uh, for European releases as well, and um, just absolutely really sad to hear of this news. Um, he attended TF Nation uh, very recently, I think last year, I want to say, as well, and and was kind of like, again, a, a great convention in the UK, uh, biggest one in Europe, I think, for Transformers conventions. And um, yeah, and he was blown away by the kind of, you know, the response that he was getting uh, while he was there. Um, and you even mentioned as well, mate, you did a really good interview, didn't you, with um, with the Triple Takeover crew? Yeah, I would definitely recommend listening to that because, in my opinion, uh, anytime you can hear the designers, especially the designers from way back then, uh, yeah. talk about, uh, you know, the work and the thought that they put into things and the challenges that they faced, it's it's such a nice treat. And I'm, I'm really glad that the Triple Takeover team you know, made the time and that he made the time to, to let us hear all of that. Because as much as, you know, I was in the United States and we didn't have those toys here right away, those were important to me because I was aware of them at the time. And so I, I had a very personal appreciation of the work that he had put into Transformers specifically. And so yeah. I was shocked and, and sad to hear about this, but glad that um before he was gone that you know the people who uh were, were the european fans of transformers um made it possible for me to hear directly from him via their, yeah. their podcast so definitely recommend that it, it is sad i i think that it, it can't be understated how important those years were for transformers because uh, Takara was not going to continue to, to make Transformers at the time since the United States had, were, were they, the United States was a big market, like the development costs, it just was not going to happen unless it had been for the European part of Hasbro taking that on and doing it. And so it's like his role in the history of Transformers was just such a big thing. 
And it, it was at a very important time whenever the brand was, um, th things could have just gone very differently. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that he made some really creative stuff. I was looking around on my shelves trying to see if I had my rotor storm behind me because yeah. it's been yeah. behind me for a lot of the episodes. I don't see it now, uh, but you know, it, it's one of two rotor storms that I have. Um, I, I just really love the stuff that they put out and it, it made me personally sad to see that he's gone. Yeah, it's, it's really sad. And from a, like a selfish point of view, obviously, you know, I, I would love to have interviewed him as well, talked to yeah. him about the GI Joe side of things, the action man yeah. side of things. Um, it was one of those things where you, you, you really do take this stuff for granted sometimes. And, and I'm, I'm definitely, you know, um, uh, you know, guilty of this, but like, you know the the fact that he was he was there there was an opportunity to really kind of like you know delve into the stuff that he'd done i feel i feel like i've let him down by not having him tell that side of the story at least to us and to our listeners and and viewers and stuff about what happened on the the branded back in the hasbro uk sort of uh time period that he was he was there for um so i kind of feel like you know it, it's sad that I mean, he probably has talked about it as well. That's another thing. He might have just discussed it with other people, with other podcasts and, and things like that. But I, I don't know. I kind of feel like a, the, there's, a, there's a bit of a letdown there. On um, I feel like I've let him down. I've let a lot of people down by not interviewing him for that kind of thing. And it's just one of the things you take it for granted. You think people are just going to be there when you, are, when you want them to be there. And the fact that, you know, he's passed away now just absolutely sucks on every possible level. And unlike our thoughts go out to his family and friends and it's really, really crap. And uh, we, but yeah, we, we wanted to kind of shout him out and kind of significantly shout him out because he was so, you know, he was kind of, he is influential to both of our lives technically, Pat, in that sense, you know, um, yeah. uh, for different reasons, but obviously for, you know, the, the, the same, same theme, but different reasons at the end of the day. But um, yeah, big shout out to Andy. Um, and like I said, to, the family and friends who are obviously going through this difficult period of time rest in peace and uh yeah and that's that's pretty much it on that one with andy um now um following on from that uh, we didn't want to we didn't want to completely end on you know that that particular downer but um you know at the same time um we've got 307 uh, a real american hero that is going to be out in june and link in the description as well. We've got the cover. I think Andy Cooper cover as well, which is pretty cool. So um, that's awesome. Um, yeah, that's another thing. Figure six pack just mentioned. We all lost out on Hector Garrido as well. And and yeah, and yeah. I kind of that's another person that you know I'd always wanted to speak to Hector Garrido. I'd always wanted to speak to a lot of people. And you know, even if it was just from a personal point of view, or a you know, not necessarily an interview on a podcast, but just in general, I wanted to kind of converse with them, whether it was like a convention or something like that. Never got the opportunity with Hector, and that that really saddens me as well. Um, but anyway, yeah. Speaking of artwork, though, we have this one from Andy Cuba. What are your thoughts on uh, this cover for with Destro and and Baroness, mate? I didn't realize it was Andy Cuba until you just said that. Uh, I I did already love it though, and. You know how it is with covers now. There's going to be multiples for each issue. Constant. It and is this is going to be the one that I want for this issue. So when does this yeah. drop? Like, when uh, do I need to show up in a store in order to get this cover? So I believe, um, let me just get the link. It's coming in June. I think it's June the, he'll say as soon as it loads up. Um, it is June the 19th it releases. Okay. So... Uh, yeah, that's when it will be available, and this this particular cover especially. I think this is the cover A, um, and the cover artist, as I said, is Andy Kubert with colour by Brad Anderson. So um, just to give you the full information on that, uh, of course, this is a, um, a Real American Hero issue, so it's going to be kind of going on with um, your kind of um, uh, revanche, um, Serpentor Khan storyline that's kind of going on at the moment, and... Um, I believe Paul Pelletier, or Pelletier, I'm not sure how you pronounce his surname, but um, he's obviously, it's been big news that he's going to be doing um, some issues, and this is one of them. And uh, so he's penciling um, Tony Cordos is inking, and Francesco Sagala is the colorist on this one. And again, we've seen some preview pages of, of Paul's work uh, with Zartan in the Swamp Skier and everything. 
Um, I'm I would imagine that's for this issue. I'm not sure though. He might be doing a few, but I know he's I know he's definitely doing one, but he might be doing more. Um, but Mark will have to fill in the details on that one from Talking Joe. Uh, but yes, there's all the info you need for issue 307. And I believe, Pat, there's one more thing to talk about, and that is this absolute banger from Kickley. Big lob with an explosion behind him using Hooded Cobra Commander as a basketball. Isn't that kind of crazy? It is. I, you know, are we missing a Kickley for this week? I don't know. I didn't think we were. Was the, I thought that he did a Skyhawk. I, that just was occurred that, to me. Was that this is week? It, no, that was a. I think that was two weeks ago. Was that where Duke is standing next to it? Oh, no, that's the Locust, no. isn't it? What no. Skyhawk did he do that I've missed completely? Um, we'll just sorry, have to have next week. Sorry, Kickley. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll like this one though. I, I have to think that the explosion is like that. He timed his jump, knowing that the explosion was going to help propel him even higher for like the half court <laughs> shot that he's making right now. It's so true. Um, it's on some Space Jam vibe. I can't see anything on his Facebook page. The only Skyhawk one I remember is that one with the Steel, the steel Brigade hanging on the bottom. Oh, okay. Is that an older one? That is an older one, yeah. Is that the one you're thinking okay. of? That is the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, that is that is a long time ago. That's about four. That might have been on an episode you didn't you didn't attend, Pat. Because you that was on your hiatus. That was probably on the Pat hiatus, yes. That is true. Um probably I think, be filling in a lot of stuff over that time. I've just been very busy. It's been crazy. I, I mean, it's messed up my sleep schedule. It's I, I sleep it's three hours at a time now. It's bad. Oh, that's awful. Um I can I just say what I posted on the Instagram's post for this image? What okay. I wrote. Yes. When when I said go dunk it in your cocoa, that's not what I meant. <laughs> I thought that was quite clever, personally, uh, especially for all the people that call him Coco. That I know you can't stand. Um, you can't I, stand. I, I don't people. Coco. I don't Coco. I don't Coco. Uh, I just thought it was quite good. You know, dunking a biscuit in your hot cocoa, slightly different, and also sounds gross when you consider dunking a biscuit in your hot cocoa. If you're talking about Cobra Commander, could be something completely different. Um, anyway. Yeah, yeah, there you go. That's all the kickly for this week. Um, and Pat even tried to trick me into thinking there was more, but there isn't. There's more, yeah. How dare you? I like anyway, the Skyhawk one though. So yeah, it's it, yeah, we got to see it on screen anyway, just on a much smaller screen. Um, anyway, yeah, thanks, Kickley, for the great work you do. That is it for this episode. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for all the listeners, our patrons, of course, for paying for the show. <laughs> keeping the lights on we appreciate it actually for all you viewers and listeners who give it like uh, 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 you know also get help us on youtube um to grow and get revenue from youtube so you're all technically helping in a mon monetary way so we really appreciate it and you like i said you're helping keep the lights on at the moment um we really do appreciate all of all of you and um yeah thank you so much for everything pat thank you for joining me as always buddy Thanks for having me on. It's nice. I should also point out at this point, Saturday at 10 is going to be the time going forward, guys. Like that, we did, we've reverted back to the old time. And yeah, I'm not going to put any more updates saying it's going to be Friday or Thursday or I don't know, February. It's going to be Saturday at 10 from now on. So there you go. Um, right. Stay fresh, cheese bags. And as always, after three, you know what to do. One. Two, three, four, full force. force. Laters. Make sure you get involved with the discussion by liking, sharing, and commenting on these videos. And as always, you can keep up with the show after listening by following on X, formerly Twitter, at The Full Force, liking the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash The Full Force. We've also added a brand new Instagram, so check us out there as well, at The Full Force Podcast. And if you would like to contact the show, you can message us on any of those platforms with feedback and questions. We also have a Patreon page, so if you want to show your support for the show, see your name up in lights on these videos, or 
enjoy exclusive bonus content, then check out patreon.com forward slash the full force podcast or click on the link on any of the posts this podcast appears in. Full force. <laughs> <laughs>